Hmm. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Saytel 2020. I am your host, Multar, and we are here with another Gold League matchup. Number 15, Battle Axe, is taking on Harpia in a reoccurring grudge match. I think number 15 took this one in the first series. This is the second matchup between these two teams. They were pretty close in the first one, and I think we're going to see a very similar outcome here in the second Match it between these two guys going head to head in Gold League. I think it is Krimsk taking on Guidada again. Teams seem to like this location. It has every different uh, terrain type. You got water, flatland, foothills, mountains, really everything going on here. We're going to see Tomcats. We're going to see some J11s. We got F18s. I think we got some 16s. We got lots of stuff going on today. I think it is the B weapon restriction, though. So things are going to get a little bit closer. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, when we come back and we bring Billy in, we're going to talk about what's been going on with the NVIDIA stuff. We're going to talk about the new stuff that's going on with ED. There's some news that happened, I think, with some Suit 35s. Um, and then we're going to talk about, I want to talk about the server, the DCS World Events multiplayer server. And we're going to talk about some things that I think are happening since the last update. But uh, yeah, here we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The mustache man has, uh, I guess his mustache didn't suffocate him in his sleep, didn't jump down his throat, and he's here. He didn't die, so that's that's a plus. Billy, how you been? I know you were busy doing some stuff with the Wild Weasel website and getting things, I think it was Wild Weasel, getting things yeah. ready to rock for the upcoming holiday season, but how you been? We missed you last Pretty time. Pretty good. Thank you. Glad to be back. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I got a new project, new apparel website, uh, a little bit more dedicated to the civilian aviation side of things and uh yeah gonna be redoing the wild weasel website mm -hmm. and kind of refreshing that look for the holiday season so yeah a lot of work going on for me right now i, I slept through my alarm uh on tuesday so i'm here made it this morning and uh, ready to go let's do it well let's you brought up uh some th su 35 news yeah yeah so i'll get the article here for everybody uh, i believe it was yesterday or possibly the day before let me try mm -hmm. to this was September 22nd, so about two days ago, uh, there were some war games going on, I believe, near Moscow, uh, Russian Armed Forces Western Military District. Mm -hmm. And it looked like two SU-35s are engaging in some sort of dogfight BFM practice, it looked like. And uh, it, it appears that if he, had, he actually shot gun rounds into the SU, uh, the other SU-35. Uh, I'm laughing at the sheer ridiculousness of this. SU-30, pardon me. Right, like, yeah, exactly. Just what? Why do you have gun rounds in there? Why are you going up in a training mission with live ammunition? <laughs> Who thought that was a good idea? I guess I it's all the crew chiefs and stuff getting drunk on the vodka cooling and stuff they got going on. That's <laughs> well, that's ridiculous. The, the SU-35 uh, S, I believe, variant it was, is not, or SM, uh, is not an older plane. I mean, it's an entirely digital glass cockpit in that mm -hmm. thing, so there should be a sim mode in it. I, I, I find it hard But regardless of sim mode, why the hell do you have live rounds loaded? 
I, maybe a weight. Maybe they're trying to simulate a weight type deal. I, I, I don't know how much weight and how much effect. That that's probably a question for some of our IRL uh, military. Maybe. Agents. You know how much uh, of an effect on the handling of performance does a full gun load versus an empty gun load have on? on I can't. I think it would be negligible. I, I can't I would, see I it being a whole right lot. There. So like, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Uh huh. Why? Why? Yeah. And skills. That's some DCS shit right there. Yeah, pretty much. It, it feels like some dumb shit that you'd see go on in a, in, a, in, a, in a DCS venue or something like that. All right. Positrons, I turned up Billy. He Sometimes Billy talks away from the mic. He gets a little distracted. And yep. he's, uh, yeah, he, uh, so that's why sometimes he's a little bit lower than me, but I did turn him up a little bit. Um, that's, that's ridiculous. At least the pilot that shot knew he got a good hit. I mean, at least he verified that his right, rounds right. hit the target. I mean, that's good, uh, I guess. Guys got out, too, so uh, good shoots, and uh, they were recovered. So they just lost uh, an SU-30 during it. But <laughs> You know, that's not, not a big not deal. Awesome. Losing yeah. a multi-million dollar aircraft, who cares? Not a big problem. Not a big yeah, deal. Those are big rounds, too, man. What is that, a 30-millimeter cannon? So, 30 yeah, mil. You don't have to make, yeah. have to make a few of the, more than a few of those hit to, yep. to do quite a bit of damage on an aircraft. So, so something else to talk about. The NVIDIA crap storm that has been going on. <laughs> you know, I talked a big game about getting a 3090 and going to camp out at Micro Center. Guys, people were camping Micro Center on Tuesday night. The 3090 didn't release until Thursday morning. They were there for two days. <laughs> what is wrong with people? Two days! I mean, I was really excited Ooh, about it, fun. and I was going to camp, but I draw the line somewhere at the ridiculousness of going to do something. I, two days. I won't wait That's, more than a night. I waited for, like, an Xbox 360 when I was in college. Yeah, yeah, I've else. done that. I did a 360. I did the PS3, um, yeah. and I waited. You know, you get there at, like, 8 or 9 o'clock, and you sit there and yeah. whatever. I'm totally down to do that. But to sit in front of a store... For two, two days. days. Who, who are the people that have the time to go do that and then the money to buy a 3090? Like that, those are just... Well, me. About <laughs> well, no, you, you clearly but you didn't have two days to go spend it. I don't work. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I'm lucky that I got a sugar mama and she takes right, care yeah. of me. Um, <laughs> so I could do that, but I'm not going to waste my time. Dude, I feel like my time is worth more than that. It's not. Absolutely. I'm not going to plant my ass in a chair and just be like, er, der, I'm going to wait for this, which it's cool. But, you know, I tried my luck this morning about getting one at 8 o'clock Central Time, and I had one in my cart, and NVIDIA's website said, screw you, Moltar. You're not getting one. And I had it, and I hit the checkout button, and I got a checkout bug, and then it was gone. So, That's a lot of hours on on DCS or skittles you may want to watch out yeah that's so we're just gonna have to wait see what happens you know chat i'll throw this out there if anybody in chat is able to get one for me i will give you money <laughs> i will give you a you know if people just go check periodically let's call it a for a founder's edition let's call it a hundred dollar bounty right if people are able to get one i will give you the money for the card plus a hundred dollars for your time if people are able to get one. So there you go. Multar throwing the bounty out there to the DCS community. If you're able to make one happen, you know, and it's not the 2000 edition because I don't really think I don't need that. Founder's edition or a tough card or something around that $1,500 price point or hell, even a 3080, right? Same bounty applies. You make one happen, bounty. I got money. It's ready to go. You, you guys know where I live. You, you see my face multiple times a week. Let's make it happen. Oh, the Spence got a 3080? Yeah, just rub it in my face. Just, you know, just, he got one. I don't. What bot, what bot network did you yeah, use? Yeah, what, what bot were you using, horrible person? That you're, I'm sure you got one legit. I'm, I could have gotten one, just the website decided didn't want to play nice. Uh, but that's that's enough about that. Let's uh, Let's talk about... The website that's coming or not the website the web the server that's coming for dcs world events uh so i've talked to bear after our last stream 
and there's some cool stuff coming. Harms are going to be a thing in there. There's going to be SAMs that activate and stuff that turn on randomly. Uh, so people are going to have to deal with a more realistic threat. It's going to be a lower population server. It's an uh, attack defense server. Uh, we're just going to try and push it to the best performance that we possibly can. And the weapon restrictions are going to be geared around Satel. So weapon A restrictions. So Tomcats are going to be restricted to four Aim 54s, Mark 60s. The Aim 9X is banned because I think it's... We want merges to actually be kind of mergy instead of who just looks at the guy and pulls the trigger faster. So, you know, Aim 9X, some people may like it. We may put it in later, but that's how it is now. And then so, all of the other aircraft are going to be restricted to six actives. You can't carry like not, 10 actives on a, on a Hornet. Are you going to put a million S300s and Patriots to desync the server down? Is that part of the strategy? Oh, absolutely. That's part of the DCS experience, yeah, right? Those, I'll just stack those on top of one another. No, until, no. So that we're going to do, if anybody f has flown long enough and you guys remember, the original open conflict, Growling Sidewinder server is not open conflict. That is not what open conflict was. <laughs> open conflict was five years ago. There was a server that came out. It's called open conflict. It was phenomenal. The guy did an awesome job scripting. Um, but the coolest thing about it was it didn't have any base defenses because it used this script called Skynet where if you got within a certain distance of a base, it would simulate a missile launch on you. And then if you carried on in the direction of the enemy base, you just blow up. So it greatly reduced the strain on the server because you don't have to simulate, you don't have to have all those emitters and SAMs and all that stuff. So it was phenomenal. Well, we did the same thing. So there's very, very few SAM like emitters on the on the the map like if you go look at a track or something from gs's server or 104th or or uh, uh blue flag there's stuff everywhere and people wonder why those servers don't run well guys newsflash dcs does not do well with a bunch of stuff on the map it just it it doesn't i mean billy you can probably concur with yeah, that I, i'll say this the the new blue flag mission has been running quite well we've been spending quite a bit of time on there over the last stop uh, yeah it's, it's been, been running better these the frames on the bases are a little yeah a little far, but once you get up in the air everything's very smooth and haven't really noticed a ton of craziness but i haven't been deep into the tack music mm -hmm. there's a corruption but you know problem. something that they've had to sacrifice for that was uh you don't get tack view if i remember right I know you do now. There was a corruption problem with it, and I think that got sorted because. But is it server it. side tack views, or do you get your own? It's well, frankly, from what I read, the ex allowing everybody to export their own can cause its own desync issues. So I think it's probably mm. better when the server takes those and puts those out for everybody because it just, from what I've read and from people I've talked to, that reduces a little bit of that desync issue there just in that because everybody's exporting their own right. tack view out from the server and it can just right. keep things up a little bit. So true so it's it's nice to hear that uh but the yeah. server's coming i think we're gonna test it this weekend um so hopefully next week i keep saying next week next week two weeks tm we're taking the eagle dynamics mm -hmm. approach here but hopefully next week is when we'll we'll launch it i'm looking forward to seeing that come up i think the community needs more servers needs more communities sub communities if you will uh, mm -hmm. to kind of to kind of build that up especially where you know it breaks my heart to see and it, i don't want to sound like i'm bashing it but the experience is really degraded over the last six to eight months on there on the growling sidewinder server and frankly it's to see that that's really where people go to get that action is disappointing I, i'd like to see some more options come up that that kind of have some of that stuff sorted out because i feel like people think they're getting one experience mm -hmm. on there then you dive into the attack view and you realize you're getting a totally different one that you don't necessarily realize is the case so you know hopefully they can sort that stuff out i think mm -hmm. you know pulling well, the, a lot of the emitters off and stuff like that is, is a, the is biggest a thing to me is nobody polices these servers where you yeah. have people that are exploiting shit all over the place like yeah, guys it's, it's bad it's pretty bad it, and it's and it's it's really picked up at least i don't i don't go on there anymore i've, I've, I've stopped with that after mm -hmm. how bad it got and it, it, we just noticed it, it it slowly degrade further and further over the past i'd say three three months really is where mm -hmm. it started to get pretty bad so mm -hmm. i don't know it's unfortunate people are going to do that type of stuff and, and you have to kind of keep an eye on mm -hmm. it or it ends up turning into kind of what we see there now so absolutely hopefully, you know more servers like the dcs world events and stuff like that focus on that stuff and, and I, I think ed from what we're hearing about mac a lot of the people in the community that want 
that type of experience. I think Mac is really going to refine up and polish up the experience with well, DCS too. I think we're going to benefit a lot from the stuff we see there mm -hmm. in the multiplayer side of things, which is going to clean up a little bit. They, they talked about running dedicated servers for Mac, which I think that is a big step in the right direction as far as like cleaning up the overall level of play and the crap that goes on within within the, the DCS mm -hmm. world right now. So hopefully that stuff makes its way into the sim in the next you know year here and we see the, the PvP multiplayer performance get the treatment it deserves and, mm -hmm. and a lot of the, the you know, uh, the, the window dressings or the, the feature stuff that some of these other, you know, multiplayer communities have. Uh, I think that would really help a lot. Mm -hmm. stuff. Well, what, the, what I'm talking about exploits is there's certain exploits that people can do where they don't die. So people are exploiting things. And yeah, you should, ban, like Borchi says, he banned a guy for team killing. That's fine. But there's a lot of things when you run a multiplayer server and you want it to be community oriented, you got to have admins in place that are looking for this stuff in order to ensure the best player experience for for the player base. But enough it's about true. that. Let's yep. uh, let's. I want to showcase a couple of the tag fees that I've had over the past couple days, um, or not the t past couple days that happened yesterday after the patch updated, and I want to know the community's opinion on this stuff which what you guys think is going on so these took place on growling sidewinder i don't know if this is desync or what but i want to i want to take a look at this stuff so here's here's the first scenario i come i'm coming into this engagement I'm, i clipped this so that it's it's shorter but i come into this engagement at like mach 1.5 from 15 20 000 feet right i le release this missile it's mach 3.5 right now coming in on its target you can see the target is right here this guy shoots like everything known to man at me Why like so many aim 9x i don't know he launches like six aim 9x's at me but Sorry. let's look at the overall view so you guys can see that he, he doesn't actually notch this missile okay he turns in front of it he drops some chaff but even before the patch where the 120 became less chaff, res chaff resistant this would have hit him and he's just dropping a little bit of chaff. And so you can see he goes through the notch, the turn notch here, but he doesn't, he's not actually notching the missile because he's not perpendicular to the missile itself. He's, uh, he's off angle, so he shouldn't have notched this. But this is what ends up happening. It doesn't even try to track him. Like, doesn't, just doesn't attempt. So I don't know if this is desync or what this is, but this is this happened to me multiple it's barely, times. It's barely Mach one there. Not I know, like, I know. They're not like that. Should be a nigh undefendable situation, in in my opinion. So let's move on. There's I got a couple of these. These aren't going to take very long, but I just wanted the the community's opinion on what is going on here because these happened multiple times. So here's another one. Um, this one, I'm coming in at like Mach 1.4 from 15 to 20,000 feet, right? We'll, we'll grab the missile's point of view in this situation again. This guy's low, and this guy does get into a notch, but he's not very slow. And when he does get into the notch, it's right in front of the missile. So right now he gets in the notch. But something that I'm noticing, uh, the Seeker's cold? You, you can't warm up the 120C's Seeker's. That's the aim nine that you can heat up. It's yeah, they're, 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 it's different. Yeah, so that's not what's affecting affecting this. Okay, but okay, this yeah. one, my missile is at Mach three right now. This guy's at Mach point eight. He'd have to be at a maybe he notches this, but if you notch these missiles, typically they like freak out and go somewhere else or something. And I'm not seeing that behavior. And then if you watch it as it comes by him, it'll turn like it it forgot that it was supposed to turn. Right, oh, it, yeah, it turned after it got to him. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. what is that? My bad. <laughs> so, that's the second one. Let's move into the third one. Now, I think part of the, the channel log was the adjustment to the flare resistance to return to a previous value, whatever that means. How much do you think that could be affecting what we're seeing? I mean, countermeasure shot. resistance. Yeah, because I don't think they were this. Shot. I don't think they were this susceptible, though. I I never. I don't. I don't know. Well, I I don't think we know when they say old value. What old value are they talking? I don't about? know. Like these guys aren't even slowing down, 
and typically you have to stay in the notch and stay there perfectly for the missile to miss. Um, but they're notching it like Mach 1, which I get is possible, uh, but it's happening so frequently that it just leads me to think that something's going on. Like, this one doesn't even try to track him. Where is it going? Yeah, yeah, it's climbing up there. That makes no sense at all. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty And bad. then the last one, this is, this is mine. This actually happens from my point of view, and we'll, uh, or it's launched at me. So... I want to know what you guys think about this is this one's probably the most bizarre uh so when this one gets launched at me i don't even i'm not even in a notch this should have killed me and i turn around and just watch these missiles as they come in All right mm, there we go where does this go what is it doing it still has more than enough energy to stay with me and it, it doesn't even attempt to hit me. That should have hit me. No question about it. That missile should have killed me. But it didn't. It like doesn't even attempt to try. And then this one doesn't try either. And it's got plenty of energy. That's oh, yeah. Right, right there. Like, where are they going? Yeah, there's plenty of energy there. It's not pulling a huge amount of G, so it's I just wanted to track properly no, either. They're no, no, cool. and I don't know if it's because. So something I, I will say is that GS changed from a four-hour restart time to eight hours. Can you show the drop down with all the SAM sites? Because that's the comical part. When you see the drop down with the amount of SAM sites on there, how anyone expects it to work right is beyond me. Well, just look at all the emitters on on the map. It's, it's insane. It's insane. The, the sim is not. How do I show up. all the the it's units? Just, if you hit the drop down, you should see it. Which drop down? Like one of the like the two drop downs at the top where you see the little plane icon. Oh, yeah! Look at that! Rolling, 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 rolling. SA10, yeah, SA10. It's, 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 look at this! <laughs> These are all there from the start. And then you, the surface groups, too. I mean, there's just an insane amount of surface groups. Was all Every single one of those, for the most part, and as you can see there, has a SAM site associated with it. And then there was, a, there was a period of time where this the mission would start, and there was a massive cruise missile strike. Like yeah, I remember ship, that. Anti-ship warfare that would start going on. And that would start causing all kinds of problems, too. It's like the sim is not set up to handle this much stuff mm -hmm. with 60 clients on top mm -hmm. of it. I mean, to expect it to be able to do all of that is just insane at this point, considering what we normally see out of the sim. So the amount of times we would go in there and be like, man, the problem here is laying right in front of us, but nobody wants to address it. So I hope maybe at some Co point. Coxie, I've asked Big Nui. There's no ECM bug. Stop. What are you even talking about? Yeah, I, I don't know. Did anyone bring up an ECM bug? I never saw anybody bring up anything about ECM. They seem like the group that would know about the exploit stuff. Let's not go there. So anyway, let's jump into the sim. Again, this is, we just got off on a little bit of a tangent, but I think this is, um, what was I going to say? I think this is stuff that the community needs to talk about, and um, I think it's stuff that the community needs to be aware of. Um, Agreed. So that's why we're talking about it. I just wanted to know if anybody else had any insight well frankly this is stuff ed needs to comment on at the end of the day they you, you look at the, the the change log that gets put out half of it doesn't make sense these days i don't know who puts together the change log there mm -hmm. but there needs to be some more scrutiny over how that stuff is worded what information is put in there and what's actually going on because too many times that stuff's fragmented that not all of the information is put out and we as the beta testers as they so often call us have not enough information to actually be beta testing the sim so they they, they say one thing and then do another and it's uh well let me let me you, let me respond to coxie since he's kind of being a douchebag in chat and i'll, I'll frankly I'm, i have no problem saying this because you know 
I've gotten some grumbles from them in the past. Coxie, the problem that I have when you talk about barrel rolling and stuff is the barrel rolling that I see from you and from other people associated with you is that the barrel rolling causes AOA problems for the missile and desync if you look at them in tack view and in tracks the it fucks up the server it doesn't know what to do and if you do it correctly and there by the way there is an ecm bug that was documented and said that there was one by twitch even though it was intended the problem with both of these scenarios is if you do them right the shooter will see the missile hit you every time and you won't die because the shooter and the defender clients aren't synced and we see this all the time on on uh uh Saytal streams where people will go into like this spin or we did before i banned it people go in this spin and it desyncs and their plane jumps around because the i'm assuming the server or whoever can't keep up track keep track of how fast the plane's moving and a lot of times you'll see the missiles hit but the aircraft will take no damage it, and people you, rolling the missiles head on and just continuing on it's i mean i've seen tactics where it's so egregious from some people it's like what's the point of even going on there you're not even playing the same game you're not doing air combat you're just flying around like that's like a spaceship you might as well go play star citizen at that right point. if all you're I mean, gonna it, do is fly head on into a missile if go all you're fly. gonna do is fly head on into a missile do this spin move or whatever and then the missile hits you from the shooter's point of view and you should be dead from his point of view and you just carry on don't have to turn cold don't give a shit and go in and kill him dude that's just exploiting mechanics in the game and you can say you can do that in single player i have people say that that doesn't mean it's the right thing to do in a in a multiplayer scenario that doesn't mean that that should happen it's just something we it's just something we have to deal with as as the community and you know we we go from there um but that's the type of stuff that billy and i are talking about is there is an ECM bug. I don't know if it was supposedly fixed in the lax patch, uh, and it was there because they're working on ECM stuff. Um, it, because they're working on ECM stuff, they put this in, and I don't think they realized that this was a problem, but there is a way to do it, and people just don't die. And it was tested, and they don't die, which is why it was banned in Satel. Um, most people don't know about it, but it is there, and hopefully it got fixed. Supposedly it did but it wasn't in the change log. And the same thing with the AOA stuff. It's just, it doesn't have a place in multiplayer. It really, it really doesn't. So, um, but enough about that. Let's jump into the server. I think this is going to be a good match. We get to see Harpy as awesome skins again. So I'm really excited about that one. I really like their Harpy Eagles that are, that they're rocking. And I'd like to see that we've got two J11s coming today. We haven't seen Su-27s or J11s come out for a long time. So I'm really Really excited about that one. So let's see how this is going to go. We're going to jump into the sim. Here we go. All right, so we're sitting here on the ground with Harpia behind Maz and his Tomcat. Then we have two J11s. Let me see who they are. We got two J11s, Wolf and Zero. And then we have Trigger and the F-18 leading the way. Yeah, Funky Crisp, you were not late. We uh, decided to talk for a while and get everybody on the same page. You know, Is, uh, Did they run J J-11s or flankers last time? I don't I think, think so. Oh, I think this is new. Frames. Yep. I like seeing that a little diversity there. I don't think they, they did this last time. So I'm, I'm excited to see this. Uh, we don't see J11s really ever. C27s yeah, really yeah. ever. It's, it's, At uh, least this season. Between. Yeah, no, it's becoming a, a thing of the past in a lot of ways. So it's nice to see it kind of yeah. be utilized here. Yep, yeah. yep. It is, it is definitely nice to see. It's always nice to see just a greater variance of different aircraft. I don't know what they're taking. I think they're taking ETs and 77s. I don't know if they have any ERs. Um, but I actually think there's a Su-27, at least one on the other team, too. So both of these teams are rocking uh, at least a couple flankers in today's matchup. So it's going to be really cool to see see flanker on flanker coming today. Any anticipations with seeing so many flankers or anything in today's matchup? 
Where, what's the terrain we're dealing with? What were the two air bases again? Uh, the terrain is going to be... Krimsk, I think, versus Guadada. Okay, so decent amount of distance there as well. Uh, not the tallest range of the mountains, but, but certainly uh, a, a decent bit of terrain to get lost in down mm -hmm. low there. I don't know. I'm curious how what we see those flankers do uh, in, in comparison to what we saw out of Harpia the last time as far as formations and uh, mm -hmm. tactics go. I don't know what's going on with the cameras. Something's freaking out. Yeah, it's definitely getting a little weird there. No, it's not freezing. It's the... I don't know what it is. The cameras don't like something. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the Tomcats? And, and I was incorrect, but I just did. There is a... There is a I don't know why in my head this was a little... I had Guadada being a little bit more south, but no, the... the the edge of that mountain range uh, is basically trails into bullseye. So uh, a lot more flat territory here than I had in my head there. So uh, th this could be a, a bit more interesting than I thought just based upon that alone. Uh, Why is it doing this? Side, so. Maybe it's the location. Go to F10 map. Come on, game. Yeah, who needs frames? That doesn't matter at all. What we got from ripping DCS just now, it, it shit the bed on us because we were talking bad about it. it yeah, knows. it hurt us. It knows. My brain is, like, not operating correctly today. There we go. It's two of us, buddy. I don't know. I, I I guess the Nvidia thing got just got me all flustered and <laughs> annoyed. That's a frustrating experience at the end of it. It's like something you want, but it's not possible to get, even though people are getting it. Yeah, I don't know. It was annoying. That's for sure. Well, I don't I don't think you're the only person out there who's a little ticked off at the entire Nvidia yeah. process. Gotta hope Wall Street figures out what's up and, and, and comes down on them over. I hope so. Yeah. Quick shout out to Gordo B for dropping a significant number of gifted subs. He gifted two. I don't know who they went to. They were community subs earlier and then gifted five more to Skittles, Yambo, Hans, Borchi, and Eclipse Task Force. So welcome to everybody. Thanks for joining the family. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. We're just watching Harpia and number 15 Battle Axes coming together in this Guadada versus Krimsk matchup. I don't know how this is going to go, um, but their first matchup between Harpy and number 15 was a really close one, so I'm really excited to see this, and hopefully it's a close one again. I, I, number 15 took the last one, so the question is going to be, will Harpy be able to come back and avenge their, their last match loss? You think they're going to be able to, Billy? I mean, I think uh, we are clearly seeing a change in tactics, uh, different formations, uh, different aircraft. So I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think I think uh, just based upon the fact that they're changing stuff up after the last match is a step in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think both teams actually are. Number 15 has... What are they taking? I don't know is that a JF-17? J-11 and an F-18 in the lead. And in the back, they've got another J-11... And an F-14. So they're actually mere matchups. F-18s okay. on both sides. Two J-11s on both sides. And a Singleton F-14 on both sides. That's interesting that both teams decided to take the exact same setup. with, Especially with the flankers that we don't see a whole lot of. Right, right, right. So the, the airframes being matched up is something we don't normally see a lot of period on here it, especially these days it used to be more common thing in some of the earlier matches of Satan that I used to call with you where, where, mm -hmm. where, where the FC3 planes kind of dominated the skies a bit more we'd see a lot of the similar matchups right so the similar aircraft but here mm -hmm. it's usually a whole bunch of dissimilar stuff going up against each other so this is a kind of a change in pace there and uh, 
I think we could say a bit more even of a match just based on right. the fact that everyone's in similar aircraft. So I'm um, curious to see how each team utilizes what they have differently from mm-hmm. the other. Uh, and we're already seeing it, as you pointed out, in formations where we have, what, a foreign trail out of the Harpy guys yep. as we're the number 15 are doing a two, two staggered flights, it looks like, of two. Looks like it. Looks like number 15 is going to be entering into a box formation. Uh, they've got a two ship lead of Cougar and Skinner and an F 18 and a J 11. And then the trail formation is Vertical Charlie and Beaver. Or maybe it's a two ship lead and then a two ship tandem, like a line formation trail in the back with the F 14 taking up the rear. Yeah, but I'm not sure. I think the F 14 in the back is a smart play, though. But Harpy on the other. On the other side, doesn't have that two ship lead, but they've got the the F fourteen in the rear, just like number fifteen does. Nubs cockpit rated with seventeen. Welcome everybody. If you're just joining us, this is Saital twenty twenty gold league matchup between Harpia and number fifteen Battle Axes in a rematch where number fifteen took it the first time. Is Harpia going to be able to take it the second time? Quick shout outs to Diagnosis for the Prime sub two months in a row. Welcome back. And then Gordo B gifts a tier one sub to Nubs Cockpit. So welcome everybody. Uh, why not lead with the 14? I like the 14 in the rear gutter because it can shoot over the planes in front of it, which can sometimes yeah. cause some, some, some uh, uh, you know, throw a wrench in what's going on there. I think I'm on the opposite where I'd want the 14 closer so you get more if you're gonna well, launch I, I, a Phoenix, I, want the, I want the Phoenix. I want the Phoenix to come in, you know, as I'm already starting to engage them. Right, allow that that F-14 to kind of push oh, I in see. And shoot into the melee as opposed to starting the melee, where most teams uh, probably expecting that these days. But to to get it started and then have the uh, Phoenixes come in mm-hmm. when, once the confusion is is, is is kind of taking place. I think. So you're saying you would wait to launch. You're not going right. to take the long launch. You're going to wait. A, a yeah. substantial amount of time, get closer, and then utilize the higher PK shot. Right. Try to let the guys in front of me eat up the initial shots from the other side uh-huh. and draw them in a little bit closer, give the 14 a little bit better parameters. Mm-hmm. And then I think, you know, when you're already, when you think you're defending shots from something and then all of a sudden a Phoenix throws itself into the mix, it can, it can really even, you know, cause you to make poor, you know, uh, basically force more poor decision mm-hmm. making than would probably already be happening in the first place there just because you're trying to get away from a phoenix but mm-hmm. you don't always have the luxury of knowing that you're running from a phoenix right so i don't know i i think trying to catch them when they're when they're recommitting with those you know with the phoenix is, is uh is in your best bet because mm-hmm. they're in that energy state that is kind of optimal for that right. bad boy right uh, another shout out to katsu owns with the prime sub for three months welcome carbon drops 100 bits and then dagwood drops 90 bits this is all going still to the 3090 fund whenever i'm able to get one if anybody's just joining us i put out a bounty if anybody is able to get me a 3090 or a 3080 i will pay you back for the card and i will give you an extra hundred dollars i need a receipt so you don't like rip poor old multar off but uh <laughs> that that is legit that you know if you can get me one Someone get a bot network up immediately. Yeah, just, I don't care how you do it. Go <laughs> mug some, don't do that. But, uh, yeah, if you can get me so one. outside uh, your local micro center with a ski mask and a wrench and just wait for somebody to walk Stop out giving them ideas. Box, crack them in the knee, grab the box, boom, Voltar's happy. I mean, as long as you don't tell me how you got it. <laughs> yeah, please don't don't tell us. Yeah, okay, I should back up. <laughs> Get one at retail price. Okay. <laughs> don't don't buy one for two thousand dollars and think I'm gonna pay that. I'm not. Um I want like oh, the the FE or the tough edition or something like that around the, the MSRP price. I should have specified that. Well, you know, some warehouse, some like factory in China right now is, is taking, they're, they're, they're replicating the 3080 housing and just taking 2080s and just slapping them inside. And they're going to be, dude, that's going to happen at some point. I Probably. Like that stuff happens every Probably. Time. It's like, oh, people want these. I can make it look like that and sell it to them for super cheap. And they think they're getting a deal. Mm-hmm. It'll happen. It probably will. It's already on AliExpress, I bet. Oh, uh, for sure. It's but it's not a 1080 or a 2080. It's going to be like a 1050 Ti with a big bolted-on cooler. 
I watched a, I think it was a line as tech tips where they like broke down those. Some of oh those yeah. Parts. What's and they're actually happening they're there. like some of them are like 60 50 <laughs> six fifties or you know I'm, oh, i'd laugh man. if somebody bought a uh, rtx 3080 and it was a gt 710 or something in it with two gigs of ddr2 vram <laughs> yeah it's just like this is this is the total opposite of what i thought i was actually getting well it's like that's why it was like 10 percent of the total <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. Uh, Separation well, between the two teams is down to 23 miles. These guys are getting very close, and no one is shooting. No one is shooting. Weapon like conservation it. to the max. I like, it. I like it. You don't need to shoot. There's no reason to do it. it sets the tempo. Let's the other team know that you're not just coming out there to spam ram missiles at them. Now they got to worry about you. But Billy, spam ramming's all the fun, man. It is. It, it, as someone who's spent some time spam ramming in his life, I can tell you it, it's very satisfying in the moment. However, when you recommit and you're like, oh man, now the distance is shorter, I really wish I had this business back. Yeah. Uh, TFS 81, I don't think there is an import tax into the U.S. from Europe. We don't pay any customs or anything like that. Okay. We're, that's one benefit of being here. Yeah, and I haven't checked the news today. But still no launches. So number 15 came in here, didn't shoot anything, and just turned around. And Harpia is doing the same thing, but instead of going full cold, they're doing more of a cross block and flying into one another. Which I like that as well. Separation between these some... teams, 28 miles. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we're going to see a little dance in here. As the, uh, the they do their uh, mm -hmm. their baiting dances here and try to find themselves the parameters they're looking for, but I don't think either team is going to go ahead and walk right into this one from what we're seeing. Yeah, so I don't see that any either. Old school diamond league tactics being brought back into the uh, the, the gold league here as uh, we don't see often, but I like it. There's uh, this this is the decision making uh, tends to be a little better mm -hmm. in these matches, so may not be as intense early on but i think we know that when matches begin like this they normally end very fast and very furious so mm -hmm. we'll see if that's the case here today tfs 81 says we pay here when things come from the u.s for anything dude that's yep, ridiculous sure. no, we don't I, we don't I, pay anything i see it when i ship the shirts and stuff it's it's especially depending on where you're going and what you're doing it's, it can be kind of crazy with that that's stuff. crazy that's crazy we may see our first launch coming between the two j11s vertical charlie and harpia's zero vertical charlie is sitting at sixteen thousand feet and zero is at thirteen thousand feet so about co-altitude and then no they just turn around no launches taken from 15 miles nobody wants to be the first one to throw their hat in the ring so I guess both of these teams are anticipating that this round is going to go the distance and they want to make sure that they have fuel and weapons still on the table for later, the later stages of this matchup. Think the F-14 is going to do anything here, Billy? I, I, with how these guys are flying and how defensive everybody is, I don't see the F-14 really catching anybody off guard. We can ride around along with Beaver, but I don't, I don't see this, see anything happening here. I'm curious what he's doing. He's definitely pressing a bit deeper than I would have expected at this point, crossing the the line of scrimmage, if you will, with mm -hmm. Bullseye there off his left hand side. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It looks like he's already starting to curl yeah. back up towards the sea there. Uh, but those J11s coming around though, he's deep. Where is anybody pushing in to cover him? It looks like somebody's coming in to cover him from the from the north there. Cover who? Uh, Beaver. He doesn't really need cover. He's already yeah. turned around. Like he's he's yeah. already egressing away towards feet wet. I mean, I like the feet wet positioning for the for the F14. I do like that. Uh, I just a whole lot of. I'm really shocked. Right like you just said, at how much sizing up is going on here without anybody throwing a punch. This right, isn't something right. we normally see. Now it looks like it looks like 
Number 15 is trying to creep slowly feet wet as we're Harpia trying to creep slowly feet dry to the north, one to the south. And we're getting that dance where we see basically both sides dance around bullseyes and mm-hmm. bullseye and change the position. But what this does, this makes the fuel game much more important. Oh, here. absolutely. For uh, sure. Because when you end up with one with your enemy's base to your rear, you know, you've now just put a whole lot more distance between mm-hmm. you and, and home. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, how much fuel you use while you fight now a much bigger uh, factor there. And what are we seeing from Bullseye as far as distance? Distance for what? How far is it from home? Yeah. How far uh, is it's about 80 miles. So not too bad. Not bad. Uh, Harpy is sitting something like 60 miles away from Godada. Number 15 sitting something like 70 miles away from Krimsk. So it's not... It's not horrible. This is Cougar, who's right over Bullseye, and he's already turning away. Nice formation flying, though. Everyone seems to be very well spaced for number 15, from what I can tell there. Uh, they, they, they look like they're setting up that grinder pretty well here. Me start, excuse me, start to see the missiles fly. Look at those burners. Kind of love that thing. I wouldn't say it looks pretty. I just like that they're not getting isolated. Nobody's getting spread out and putting themselves in a zone where they can get gang banged by their opposition they're all together they can all provide mutual support if needed um it's i just like that nobody's getting off on their own nobody's trying to scout different locations for later in the day that they may go get a bite to eat or something they're they're all sticking together they've got a game plan it looks like for both these teams and they're trying to execute it which i really like now we're gonna have to see if this execution carries on throughout the entirety of this match because usually what will end up happening is one team will execute longer than the other one and the team that gives in first is usually the one that gets pounded so who's that going to be i don't know um that'd be uh, the closest we've seen them to bullseye right now i believe trigger it is this is definitely the closest we've seen them to bullseye uh, and actually the closest we've seen this many pilots together we're inside Right around 15 miles. That that 14 is in position to take some shots there, but holding off right now. Uh, yeah, he's just one. waiting. And so is Mazzucato up here to the north. Nobody's wolf's altitude? taking his shot. Say that again? Oh, uh, I was checking a wolf's altitude right there. I was trying to see if he's low. Yeah, he's you got, pretty low. You got real-time telemetry. You should be able to t- yeah, check I'm that out. Now. I just remembered that. And what <laughs> we just tra- talked about with real-time telemetry, if you guys type exclamation point tack view, you can get the information needed to log into real-time telemetry via attack view advanced so be sure to check that out and here is the first shot it's mazzucato releasing a mark 47 that is this is the first missile launch of the match we have been in the air for almost 20 minutes and nobody has launched anything until now and here it comes it's on vertical charlie vertical charlie's not low He's at 16,000 feet. Here's the split view. Vertical Charlie is right here in the middle. Is this going to track him? He should be getting a missile warning. Is it a dead missile? Is it on Cougar? I can't tell who this is on. Is it on anybody? It looks like it's gone stupid. Where's his aspect? Did he support no, he turned. He supported it for a little bit. Yeah, this missile's like dead. Yeah, it's just it's dumb. Huh? No, 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 no. It looks like it's trying. No, it's not doing dead. anything. Dead, dead. It's dead. That's strange. That was a bizarre one. And this is on an older patch, ladies and gentlemen. This is on the the August patch. This is not on the latest patch. This is August. Right. This mat mi- this matchup took place, I think, August twenty third. So. About a month ago we're about a month behind um so phoenixes have been doing that they've been doing better in the latest update i don't think with guidance but the flight model they don't have a tendency to just trash all of their energy as they come down from altitude anymore hey jerry welcome uh yeah this is Satal, uh squadron air to air league uh this is the gold league so teams of four versus each other uh uh let's see do we, do we go into the rules here now there, there's definitely a, a wide selection of rules and weapons choices and all that type of fun stuff but basically the, these guys march into a bubble and mm-hmm. battle it out until uh somebody yep. returns home and yep. hopefully lands 
Oh, Shaman, that missile is definitely dead. It's not tracking anybody. It's just on it. <laughs> it, it gave up on life a long time ago. It's just flying <laughs> towards its doom. I don't know where it's going. But now Vertical Charlie is getting in really deep. Is he going to be the first one to try and make something happen? So I'll give you guys the split screen so you guys can get an idea of where we are. Here's Vertical Charlie on the map. And he's ingressing against Trigger. And there goes an ER against Trigger. But Trigger responds with a quick-fired 120. Now, is Vertical Charlie going to be able to get away from this? His ER is going to be unsupported. There's the 120B two and a half miles away. I don't think he gets away from this, Billy. Half mile now. Point three miles. Face mile. Vertical Charlie is the first casualty. And that is the pro one of the problems with the J-11 is that its ER is semi-active and it is, it is unsupported. While you have to defend, you're going to have a bad time. The new fire looks nice. It does. It's real nice. It does. It is nice. But Vertical Charlie is the first casualty here. And those were only the second and third launch missiles, Billy. Second and third launched weapons. A lot of ammo left. A whole lot of fighting to go. Yeah. It's I don't think we've seen... I don't think we've seen one aircraft launch more than one missile. No. Nope. Which is but, good. This is... I mean, this, yeah. is, this is smart to play. This is... This yeah. Is, I mean, it's, we talk about missile conservation a lot here and having the missiles for when you actually need them, taking only the shots that are actually you're in the right parameters for. And we're seeing guys do that here. This is this is two two guys there that really waited for good parameters mm -hmm. to make their shots. And then that's why we saw. We yeah. Saw. And it was so, it was a good shot by Vertical Charlie. I, I can't was, say correct. I'm correct. not going to talk that down. That was a good shot. The problem was. He has semi-active only. He didn't have an R-77. The R-77 doesn't have the same speed or range as the ER. So if a guy quick launches a 120 at you, well, his missile can track on his own as long as it picks you up. And yours won't while you defend if you break radar lock. So that's just something that has to has to be dealt with. Mark 47 and a 120B being exchanged now up here to the north between Mazzucato and Skinner. Uh, I think the, the AIM-54 is going to have the advantage. I'm going to try and get both of these guys here. So here's Mazzucato defending a 120 that's back there. And then we're going to grab Skinner. I guess we're not. Here we go. Pause this for a second so that the camera can catch up. There we go. And I think both of these guys are going to get away without really too much of any issues. Something I'm going to try here real quick while we got a lull in the action is I'm just going to tank the trees and see if we can get that to behave any better. I don't know why it's all of a sudden decided it didn't want to play nicely. Haven't really had any problems with it in the past. I mean, we've had a little bit of problems, but um, okay. So we're see if dropping the trees by another ten percent ends up helping us with the the performance here of dual cameras. But maybe it's the processor and the cores it decided to utilize. I don't know. I probably need to set up uh, preferred cores for both of these instances and see if that ends up fixing stuff. But still, three pilots remaining for number 15 and four pilots remaining for Harpia. Let's hit play again and see how these guys get it going. Okay, so we're going again. Distance between Harpia and number 15 is 10 nautical miles. So these guys are decently close here. Only three missiles, four missiles, five, six missiles have been launched so far. Here comes another Mark 47 coming in, launched by Beaver. As we're riding along with it. And it is, is it going on trigger? It looks like it's coming in on trigger. Trigger is at 7,000 feet. If it's on zero, he's at about the same altitude. They're 10 miles in front of the Phoenix as it ingresses in towards its target. Everyone from number 15 is now cold. And we have a single tin from Harpia that is hot. Yeah, this missile is going to be trashed. It just doesn't have the gumption to be able to keep up with trigger. It's already down to 700 knots. Yeah, that thing's totally done. 
What does number 15 need to do here, Billy, to be able to, to come back? They're a pilot down. They're an aircraft down. Um, the aircraft they lost was a J-11. What do they need to do, you think? Well, use, utilize that 14 a little bit better than, than they are. Put that thing in some <clears throat> good parameters, support it to be able to try to at least level the score here. But I'd be leveraging that in its, its range to mm -hmm. try to get a kill right now. Mm -hmm. Good point. Which he's circling up. If he comes in <clears throat> to the northeast there and, and circles around, and at least, you know, even if you just put a volley of a few of those things out to drive them back to allow the J11 mm -hmm. and the F18 to press and maybe get some better parameters, but you need mm -hmm. to you need to force Harpy into a situation where you can get the parameters mm -hmm. you need. I think the 14 would be the key to do that. And it looks like it's coming around now to maybe try to line up a shot here. Yeah, maybe the aim set. That's an interesting launch. Instead of a Phoenix, he puts an aim seven out. Maybe he just viewed it as an unfavorable target. It's going on Skinner, who is really low. So I guess he support? viewed that. Kind of uh, Still within. Not anymore. No, no, not anymore. Yeah, no, that was just. And then Beaver takes that. another AIM-54 Phoenix launch, the Mark 47 variant, for 20 miles. These it's just aren't favorable. Yeah, no. I mean, it everybody. Turns, it def he definitely reacted to that AIM-7. What, what he's doing right now is another story, but it looked like he reacted to that shot. And there goes the Mark 47, but was that not supported either? Well, it's tracking. Was. It's tracking, it but tra you're, everybody now is so low that you're taking these 20-mile shots that if they're anticipating yeah. that they're coming or if anybody sees that smoke trail, they're just going to turn around. So that's, yeah, you can see that missile's out of energy already which is unfortunate. Gordo B gives another sub to Dave and another one to Jerry Can the third. So much appreciated. Gordo's on a roll today. Really, and, and good on Gordo for taking care of somebody who's just found the stream and helping bring somebody into DCS and into Sage all the more. Appreciate that, Gordo. Good on you for that. So Skinner's now leading the way for number 15. Eight miles away from Wolf in a J-11. For Harpia. Looks like Skinner sees him, but is he going to be able to get close enough to get a shot? No, he's breaking away. He's decided it's not worth it at this point to get that close. I'm getting the hell out of here. Uh, not worth tunnel visioning in on him. And then we've got an ET launch from Wolf onto Beaver. And Mark 47 in response to that ET or maybe not in response, but launched at the same time as that ET. Mark 47 is definitely going to have more energy than the ET by the time it reaches its target. You can see that ET's totally out of energy by this point. And Wolf, I actually don't think that missile's on him. Is it? Uh, it's maybe. moving pretty fast, but it does not look like it's tracking well enough. That's for sure. I think it's actually on Mazzucato. Yeah, I was going to say, it didn't look like it was tracking him. There. So if yeah. we grab the missile, yeah, it's on Mazzucato. He was getting the warning, though, no doubt about it. He looked like he may have picked up an active. No, maybe not. I don't even know what happened there. Yeah, the missile's doing its dance. I don't know what it does. It freaks out, has an aneurysm, doesn't know what to do with itself, and then does its thing. It's like its it doesn't know what its shape is. Maybe. It still thinks it's a skinny 120. And a skinny 120 with baby fins. Up. Baby fins. Yeah. And Skinner is now kind of sandwiched. There was an ET coming from Wolf onto Skinner, and he's got a 120 that he's dragging behind him. Can we see that? There's the 120, a mile behind him. Not going to be a factor as he merges with his wingman Cougar, who's flying the opposite direction. So Skinner is still dragging this 120. Now 0.4 miles away. But that's not going to be a factor as that missile's totally out of energy. He's just dragging it. Assuming that it's still a dangered threat, but I think he realizes now that it's not getting any closer to him. He can think about recommitting. Now Cougar and Trigger are head-on, separated by something like four miles. We've got missiles being exchanged by them. Two R-77s coming out for Cougar. There's, I don't see the 120. His R-70s, ooh, that actually flew over him. Where'd that go? 
Oh, there it is. So that 120 flew over top of his head, and he got lucky there. I don't know if he notched it, line of sighted it, or what happened there, but he was able to get away from it nonetheless. Now Skinner is ingressing onto Wolf. Let's see if we can see Skinner from Wolf's position. He's going to be on his right. Wolf looks to be committing in here onto Skinner, who is five miles in front. Head on now. Here's the split view so you can see what's going on. Here goes an R77. That looks like it's on Cougar. 120 launched by Skinner. And now Skinner's got all kinds of stuff coming in on him. And OBS decided it didn't know what to do with itself. But you guys saw it, I think. As long, was that smooth? Ooh. No. No. I did see it looked like Skinner got taken out. Yeah, Skinner got hit by a couple R-77s. Why is... Is the OB, is the DCS window smooth or not? It it just went from slideshow to smooth, so it's good now for me. Hmm. I don't know why. My, maybe I need to restart my PC. It's a little weird, that's for sure. One twenty coming in from Trigger onto Cougar. Cougar, do you see that? I think he line of sighted that with no problem. So now we're down to two, number 15 point. Yeah, so it's a 2v4 at this point. Skinner got taken down by Wolf. And now Cougar looks like he's trying to make something happen against Wolf. So the two J11s are ingressing against Cougar. Is Cougar going to be able to avenge his fallen comrades in any, any way, shape, or form? Magical, this is a gold league, a 4v4 match. There goes an ET. Actually need to pause this real quick and let the map catch up. There we go. Nope, still not there. There we go. And Cougar gets taken down by Wolf. So Wolf is on a bit of a rampage here. And now Wolf is... Where's his opposition? Now Wolf is merged with, I can't tell, Cougar was actually able to trade there. Cougar was actually able to take somebody down with him. But now, Beaver has a 120 coming in on him, and I don't know that he's going to be able to get away from this. He's turned into it. Uh, there's the 120, and he is dead. It's like we said earlier, once something starts to go wrong for one team... It has a tendency to go very, very wrong. Oh, and ejecting saying? into the ground is not something you typically want to do. What's the old uh, saying? Uh, shit tends to roll downhill, right? And in this case, it rolls downhill and just continues <laughs> to speed up. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. So is that it? We're one hour watching the egress. That is it for round one. We're gonna jump to the Oh no. To the tack view and see what ended up happening. And uh yeah, three of them still remaining. The F fourteen already well on its way back. I don't see this being a yeah, struggle we'll to get back through a We'll see if they actually make him RTB or not. Yeah, I, I I'm gonna assume All right, so let's bring up the tack view here. He's burning. Yeah, he's got he's full gate. He's this should be all right. Let's see what match is this. Number fifteen, Harpia. Yeah. Yep. Which team. this was a a much uh, a much more. Uh, conservative match than i would have expected it to be mm -hmm. uh which i, I like, like i said we, we, we touched on this but i like to see when teams kind of take this approach as a 
opposed to just cruising in there like a bat out of hell. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, th certainly there are teams that can go out there and do that and be successful with that approach. I just think with a team that's going to sit back and wait for the right parameters, you, you put yourself in a much more compromising position. But uh, uh, Harpy, I think at the end of the day, was the more uh, aggressive uh, team in, in this match and that paid off for them. So, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a balance there between those two things, right? You know, being conservative and being aggressive and, and waiting for the time to, to be aggressive. And I think Harpy did do a pretty mm -hmm. good job of, of, of waiting for that window to open and, and kind of right. pushing through it. All right. So here's the first casualty. I was looking earlier at Mazzucato's aim 54. I don't, I'm going to assume they just lost track because he, he stayed hot and tried to support it for a while. It just seemed like the missile didn't track anybody. So I'm going to assume the F-14 when it was guiding it before it made it to pit bull range that it just wasn't able to track in any way, shape or form. So, you know, it is what it is in this situation between vertical Charlie and trigger. Um, I think it's important to, well, let's see. It's important to point out that they're at co-altitude. They're about the same speed. In any situation like this, anybody that can carry 120s has an advantage against the flankers. And Vertical Charlie, I think, needs to recognize that this is an 18. It's not a flanker that he's fighting against. So even if he shoots, if the guy sees him, he's not going to be able to support his missile. Because he has to fight a missile that can guide itself while the missile that he launches has to be guided by his aircraft. So he de fully defends. I mean, maybe he could have done something about this if he would have cranked and, and dove well, instead of fully defending and guided that onto its target. I just think the, the, the important thing to take away or remember from this is, is the, the, the J-11 here is forced to ev evade to a minimum as to where the, or, or maximum, if you will, like it can only evade to a certain degree due to its missile requiring connection mm -hmm. to the aircraft. The F-18 can evade in its normal full out, I need to evade as hard as I possibly can here. And it, it just doesn't, if that J-11 wants to even have a chance of that missile hitting, it, it, it he can't do that. Now, granted, right. sometimes you shoot those missiles knowing full right, hey, this is gonna ring someone's RWR, it's not gonna hit them, but it's gonna separate me from them and I mm -hmm. need that to happen here, right? Because if he doesn't, if he just evades and allows that F-18 to continue pressing him here, even if he gets away from this mm -hmm. missile, he still now has a bandit hot pursuing him as he's just bled a lot of energy. And uh, that that's also a uh, uh, pretty bad situation Something that he could have well. done here would be to double tap, launch an ER, and then put an ET right behind it. Uh, that's true. The guys, exactly. You're going right, to see yeah. one smoke trail. You're not necessarily going to see both missiles. The guy's going to defend the missile launch warning that he gets from the ER and the radar, and he's going to assume as soon as he defeats it and he loses uh, the lock warning from, or the launch warning from Vertical Charlie's J-11 that he's defeated it, and then maybe he'll recommit, which he actually does. He does recommit back into this, uh, and maybe he'll recommit back into the ET, which, you know, when you're flying, well, I guess he doesn't recommit. He does, like, this barrel roll. So maybe that ET would have caught him, maybe not. But when you're fighting from J-11s, from flankers against people like that are flying NATO aircraft with AMRAMs and stuff, you got to get creative and think about things that allow you to dupe your opposition. And I flew the flanker for years. Uh, it's something that you had to do. Um, and it's now that these guys have data link and stuff, it's even harder to do. So my heart goes out to guys that fly the flanker. Uh, but, you know, you got you to come up with something. And engaging them head on... That is not the something you should be doing because you have to support your missile and he doesn't. I mean, maybe an R-77 in this situation would have been better instead of the ER because the R-77 is active. It could have guided itself. And from what I understand, it's after the last update, it's a lot closer to being similar to the 120. Maybe Which that's maybe in, not quite, this but... That this is on, I believe, right? The, the, R, the 27 updates were part of this yeah. version, right? Yeah. Pretty sure. So Vertical Charlie gets taken down. He's the first casualty. And then we go back into this grind of nothing really happening for several minutes. Uh, and Skinner's going to be the next casualty. So not during this pass. Not that one. I think it's this one. It's this one. How close do these guys get? What happens here with Skinner? Does he just not see... 
I believe the flanker was low. He was. I guess he just didn't show up on data link, more than likely. But you got to be scanning low. I mean, you got to assume somebody's there. When you're making assumptions that your home, your home scotch free is when bad things like this are going to happen. And, uh, and that, that first missile he launched, I think, just tracked the wrong person. I think it went on Cougar instead of onto Skinner. But Skinner, at this point, he's... It's so close now, two miles. You're not getting away from this. Unless you can just snap notch it, you're just... You're dead. Yeah, no EO, no RWR, but you can't rely on your rwr you got to be scanning low you have to anticipate when you're fighting flankers that they're going to be low and you have to realize that they could be there right that's just something you have to contend with you have to do that and not just rely on your data link or or what have you, you gotta try and see if somebody's there and you, you, i think another thing that gets him in trouble is none of the guys that are behind him none of his friendlies are high scanning with him so he's he's just scanning by himself and that ups the possibility that you're going to get jumped by somebody that's unseen when you're just doing it on your own. I mean, you got to utilize these other radars and then voice comms oh, to see if anybody else is there. But these guys are cold. They're not going to be able to support him. I don't think he has anybody contributing to a picture. No, he doesn't. Data that, I, that's what I'm saying is part of the problem. Yeah, there's all, there's there's they there's it's two J11s mm -hmm. and a uh, and a 14, right? Mm -hmm. So there's nobody. Well, even even if you don't have anybody contributing to the picture, you can still, if they see somebody, relay that, hey, there's somebody close to you. Because you're going to see your friendly on data link. You're just not going to get the enemy contacts uh, via over PPLI that you would if it was another 18 or 16. This is the merge that happens between Wolf and Cougar. Cougar actually gets a close R-77 off, but then I think it's Wolf gets... An R-73 he, off, he right... Oh, that R-77 actually wasn't on Wolf. I don't think he saw him. Cougar could have gotten a double kill here. You're, uh, take, check where you're centering on. It's a little bit south of where we're seeing. There we go. Yep. So, yeah, Wolf, I think, is just hidden below the line of sight of where Cougar is. And he doesn't see him, and he sees zero, right. and then Wolf just comes out of the, out of the valley... And punishes, punishes zero for flankers be flanking. Yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like here at least. But he could have had a double kill. Could have had a double kill. Yeah. And this this goes back to Beaver being low. He can't contribute to the picture of the overall state of the engagement because he doesn't yeah. have the ability to really look over hills, which is unfortunate well, and then where this where this fight has descended to really takes the tomcat out of the picture because yep. whether it's jester or human rio back there we all know how much that the f14 can struggle picking up the super low mm -hmm. contacts in the clutter down there and uh it's just it's with you with the risk of friendly fire you're putting right. that f14 in a pretty bad spot right. by f taking the fight down low there uh they would have been better off keeping that fight up at altitude and really letting that 14 work but i think at that point in the fight he was he was pretty low on missiles anyway so mm -hmm. i don't i don't know how much that would have really affected things at the end there yeah, but, yeah it's something I to don't think know. about when you let 14. usually it's so. the people that aren't the teams that aren't able to contribute very readily to the overall picture of what's going on and they lose situational awareness are the teams that are uh, typically going to go out first in these in these matchups and that's what we saw there i mean they were getting themselves into positions where they were getting jumped by low contacts uh and if they had high high trailers i think they could have very well seen those low contacts and been able to relay that even though they didn't have ppli over voice comms but you know at the same time that same stuff goes towards harpia where they were all low too, so they weren't really contributing either. They were just able to to uh, uh, capitalize on the low the low flights and get into positions where they were able to get in unseen. All right, so we are fast forwarding here, guys. I'm going to send you to the trailer for 
for Fight for Honor that's coming up this weekend. There's still time to sign up all the way through this Friday. So if you guys want to still sign up, matches will be starting at 1400 Zulu. There is actually a possibility now, if you guys are taking place in that event already, that you won't fly until Sunday. Uh, there's 160 people that have signed wow. up. So you may not fly until Sunday. We're just going to have to see how everything goes down. But enjoy the trailer, and I will see you guys back here in just a minute. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Billy has turned into a Discord window. There we go. He went to take a bio break real quick, but we're gonna get this started and get these guys back in the air. I'm gonna leave it on one camera so that the, the stream doesn't freak out. I guess in the future, I've just gotta make sure that I restart my PC before we go live. I don't know what, what caused it to not want to behave today, but it decided it didn't want to behave. So I'm not entirely sure why. Billy, welcome back. We're already in the sim. Round two between number 15 and Harpia. Number 15 is now taking off from Guadada. Harpia will be departing from Krimsk at this point. Sorry about that. Uh, Harpia won round one. Number 15 is down one to nothing coming in here to round two. Billy, what do you think number 15 needs to do in order to to equalize this at one apiece, if that's at all possible. I think they just need to provide better mutual support, and I think they're going to do much better if their trailers that are ingressing later than their leaders climb back to altitude. I think it's really hurting them having everybody low. <laughs> hey, there's Ozzy. Uh, yeah, I think supporting each other is certainly a big factor in that whole thing. I'd like to see, once again, I'd like to see the Tomcat utilized in a little bit more of an effective manner. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like there were some opportunities there for that to happen, and, and it just wasn't capitalized on as much as maybe they could have. Mm -hmm. So so that certainly, and uh, you know, maybe keep the altitude up there a little bit. It's pretty obvious, or you know, send the, send the J11s down low to go after the other J11s. I just think you need to try to keep you know, what you can up high in that whole thing, i.e., mm -hmm. you know, using the other 18 and the F-14 to stay high and try to keep those other two honest in, in that regard. Um, but that's that's tricky there, trying to play the altitude game on two levels right. with four people is not, an, is not an easy problem. It's not buy, easy, uh, but I think it's something that needs to happen in order to give yourself a significant advantage in a match against another team, especially a team that's, that's not taking advantage of the same thing. Number 15 finishing up departing here at Guadada. Gorda B dropped another tier one sub to Where's Lazi and Captain Cleveland came in with the prime sub says, love the content boys. Thanks for making the work day easier. Well, you know, whatever we can do. I remember when I was working before I got obliterated by a delivery truck and my that motorcycle was no more. 
remember what the work day was like. I mean, this is work to a point, but it's more work that I enjoy doing. So I'm, I'm totally on the thing of people need to do what they love for work because then it's not work. And then shout outs again to Gordo B for dropping a gifted sub to Dave0869. Billy looks like he's reading. He's deep in thought. Yeah, sorry. There was I got some Discord messages that caught my attention for a moment, but I'm back with it. Sorry. It's from his OnlyFans. Yes, yes indeed. The mustache. Which, uh, you know. If, mustache rodeo. If you're cool enough, you get that link. Not everyone gets that, but you know, hey. I'm not really in it for the money. It's more for uh just the whole uh, you know, attraction of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's 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 out there. One One of the Marty, I think I said that right, maybe, points out that there was a lot of separation between the departing flights for number 15 and actually a very similar thing coming up for here for Harpia. Harpia took it a step further, and there's separation between three elements instead of just two. And you guys couldn't see that, but let me... Let me point that out up here for you. So here's the, the separation that I was talking about. Instead of between two elements, it's actually between three. And the 14 waited until zero departed second and Trigger and Wolf departed first. Thank you, Bullet. Appreciate you being there, bud. Maybe that's what we should call the, the subs, it's the good. mustache club. And well, and Skittles only knows that because he's actually, in fact, one of the mods of that subreddit, so... Thanks for giving me away, bruh. I don't know if I should be concerned or... <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not concerned. There's nothing to be concerned about there. I just don't know what to, how to take that. You, should, there should, you shouldn't ha automatically have a response or something like that. That would almost be more startling. Well, in the future, I would. I was trying to think of a more age-appropriate response to that, and I just I couldn't come up with one. I'm, uh, my brain's not working like that. I just, yeah, I well, couldn't do it. It's understandable. So like we talked about earlier, in my opinion, number 15 needs to better utilize the vertical and their trailing elements need to be higher to get a better picture on what's going on. Uh, Harpia seems to like to get low. So if number 15 is able to capitalize on the altitude, I think it's going to make this this match go heavily in their favor. At least that's what that's what I think. Here's Mazzucato in his F-14. Two AIM-9s, two sevens, and four 54s. We talked about this in previous matches, Billy, but no Talds. And no poor man's Talds on the AGM. Yeah, you know, the deception is certainly something I think has a, a pretty big value that's underutilized uh, with that type of stuff within Seital, within a lot of different you know areas of DCS, if you will. I, I think you can you can do a lot with stuff like that if you mm -hmm. have a plan as far mm -hmm. as how to implement it. And uh, I don't know if we see enough of that. I'd like to see more teams kind of work that type of stuff in. I think it's tough. It's a tough proposition, especially with the approach people take to shooting missiles around here, where. You know, people seem to shoot them at times when they absolutely probably shouldn't, and, mm -hmm. and it leaves them without, you know, some towards the end. And I think if teams are a little bit more conservative and learn how to be, uh, you know, a bit uh, more more choosy with their with where and when they shoot, they wouldn't mm -hmm. have as big of a problem allocating a, ra a rail to something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's one of those things where a team has to take the risk to try it, see the benefit of it themselves, and then begin to implement stuff like that more. But it takes a risk and a commitment from a team to, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. So, But maybe maybe we see more of that coming. I think you and I try to do what we can to kind of point that stuff out um, because we do know the value of it at the end of the day, and we have seen that stuff work pretty well for certain teams who do it right once again that's that's not something you just kind of do and say we're just going to throw this out there because you're just wasting it at that point you really have to have a plan built around when and where that's coming out and who's going to do what once mm -hmm. we see the reaction to that is you know once the the the, the trap is laid and the team fall, begins the other team begins to fall into it you know people have to be in position and ready to do what they need to do at that point and that takes practice there's no doubt you you, you could talk through something like that all you want, but to 
teams have to have seen that kind of play out to be able to take advantage of it. So, Billy has a black part in the top left corner. Oh, yeah, he did. Oh, he fixed it. Yep, I was looking at that going, what is going on there? But yeah, I thought something was on my screen. So yeah, no. I've done that before. I'm like, what is screen. that? I thought it was a dead <laughs> pixel. Panic in the back of my head. It's just a green screen. I was like, did I sneeze or something? Like, what the hell is on the screen right there? But yeah, no, that was that. So awesome. Appreciate you guys staying on top of that stuff. I mean, they stay on top of me screwing up all the time. So the least yeah. they can do is stay on top of green screen issues. <laughs> So uh, I, I'm curious at what point here we see the altitude descend down into the crap. Um, I don't think we're going to see it happen for a while. I think we're going to see a, time either, so. a reoccurrence of what we saw in round one okay. where everything's heavily delayed. Nobody wants to commit into the fight. And teams are just trying to take their time. trying to outweigh their opposition. At least that's what I think. Separation between these two teams is down to 37 miles. Here's what the picture looks like right now. Harpy are doing some different stuff formation-wise, it looks like. One headed northeast, one headed southwest, and then zero in the Hornet coming through the middle of that with backed up by that F-14 with, what, about 20 miles separation there, roughly, between the... The middle J11 and I'm sorry, that's yeah, a J11 in mm -hmm. the middle and then a 14 trail on it. I feel like we saw Harpia do this the first time against number 15, where they were doing this to defeat the the Phoenix, and it didn't really work out well for them because number 15 was way more aggressive. I'm really curious as to why number 15 had this change of heart and moved from a heavily aggressive. And anybody in chat from number 15, correct me if I'm wrong, but they moved from a number a heavily aggressive stance to very passive and patient. I wonder why that, that change took place. I'm not sure either. It's interesting, interesting point there. Uh, they, they're definitely a shift though. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. J11 from Harpia being piloted by zero came up the middle is now breaking away. Here's the split screen. So you guys can see what's going on. Here's zero right here in the middle. And Cougar and Skinner down here to the South have done the exact same thing. Something else interesting that I've, I'm seeing Billy is that the J11s aren't flying together. They're, supplementing the NATO aircraft. It seems like it. They're certainly out in front right now, and I, that seems very purposeful. A lot any of separation here. I any mean, bets on who's going to fire first? I'm going to assume it's going to be number 15 on this one. I think coming out of the first round, down one, they, they need it. They need to get that first kill. So mm -hmm. I, I, I think the aggression really needs to come from them on this. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't think Harpy is going to give them the look they want. I mean, neither team really or either team has done a good job of, of not allowing the looks the other team wants when they want it. And uh, I think that was part of what we saw in that, in that mm -hmm. in the dancing the first round of what we're seeing right now. Um, it's it's really as as we talk about here that it's looking for that window to open. You know, the window is going to open, and you got to jump through it at the right time and mm -hmm. uh, take somebody down, and then and the dominoes start to fall at that point. So uh, it's it's really about keeping your eye out for that moment to be aggressive. And there's the first shot out of number fifteen right there. Uh, is it aim seven? Aim seven from from might Beaver. Well be in the country at that point from the distance he's shooting. Yeah, how far was that launch from? I mean, you're talking... 30 miles. Now, yes. maybe that was just to get a reaction out of them. Could be. But with these guys being this... Far. Not necessarily far, but just hesitant to engage. It just... I don't I see mean, the point. If you had a group steaming forward and it, you, know, you made them think Phoenixes were coming in with an AIM-7 shot, which they very well, you know, you, you could fool somebody into thinking, okay, the F-14 is targeting me. Okay, here's the shot. There's the Phoenix. And really, it's just an AIM-7 that, that's, that's unsupported to some degree. Uh, 
but it, it, it doesn't look like they're really set up to take advantage of the confusion that might sound because you look we're seeing some some defensive maneuvering out of harpia there although mm -hmm. zero doesn't seem to be affected by the name or doesn't seem like anyone's really getting that warning at this point i would assume uh, no it's it's unsupported at this point uh, yeah, i mean i could so i could see an aim seven utilized if somebody let's say one of the j11 shot at you and you want them to break off and unsupport the missile or you know if you're trying to drive somebody in a certain direction but when everybody's this close i wonder what the mindset was behind launching that aim seven and I, I can't say that it was necessarily wrong i mean i've said that in the past but thinking back on it i don't know what the point of that was i'll just say it like that Yeah, I don't really understand that one either. I mean, who knows? That could have been even been an accident I know right now. Even some of the bigger stages, I've I've mm -hmm. pushed holder, push that trigger, push that pickle button when I don't want to, mm -hmm. just from squeezing the stick, you know. So mm -hmm. certainly a, a realistic possibility. There. Yeah, Delta one thirty four asked, "Why are they not really working as a team? Looks like four individuals fighting each other." Kind of. Yeah, that's <laughs> tough to say from this view. Yeah. You really there's there's a organization to formation and tactics right but then there's communication at the end of the day and if you're in position to support one another uh mm -hmm. it doesn't have to look all pretty with the tack form i think to still right. be effective in, in a lot of ways especially in this environment so uh it, it may at times look more confusing than it actually is or mm -hmm. look more uh uh disorganized than it actually is um, mm -hmm. i think once you watch enough tack views yeah you see, the, the thing you want to make sure that you do, like as a team, is just make sure that nobody's ingressing together, or not not nobody, but everybody's ingressing not alone, that people are committing together, people are providing mutual support, so things don't have to, like, like Billy just said, it doesn't have to look pretty to be effective. Uh, things can be look really messy and be totally effective, it just depends on how things are working out well, if you will it, it's it, it's it the, the x factor in what we're talking about here is the one thing that we can't really provide you guys in a, an effective manner is the communication that each team is having because the communication really paints the picture of how organized and how well one of these teams is moving and working together uh like like, like he's saying the 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 look of 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 icons on a map uh you know, and especially if and this is another reason why the tack view is great. Like I'm looking at the tack view and, it, and it's, a, it's a different picture when you look at it from the side or from an angle, when you see how these guys are kind of moving mm -hmm. and working and flowing together. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think this, this map view or this F10 view in DCS doesn't really give mm -hmm. it the best look on that front. So it can be deceiving uh, mm -hmm. to someone just kind of seeing yeah. that and being like, well, why are they all a bunch of, why are they all over the place? They're not kind of moving or flowing as, as mm -hmm. a, as a, as in, in one fluid, uh, pack or something like that right uh you know tack form is great like i don't want to sit there and sound like i'm shitting on tack form because tack form is definitely great and there's a reason why you do it and then you know, there are certainly some people out there in the dcs community that are really good at their tack form i've seen it in tack views and it's it's pretty it's pretty it's great but i've also seen teams that do great tack view that the moment that somebody shows up the thing falls apart and, and right. it's about how you kind of regroup and come together in that moment so like and support each other so this is this is a concerning element right here you have two guys from each team going mano -y mano against the opposition and there's not a whole lot of mutual support yeah these guys are hot but they're 10 miles in trail so if this guy gets in trouble it can be really hard to be able to support him now on the flip side of that coin I think Zero recognizes that and Vertical Charlie recognized that and maybe they were putting themselves in those positions um, to try and bait something and then try and create a bag and drag scenario. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, 51st Frosty asks, is there any AWACS? This is Gold League, so there's always AWACS. So Diamond League, the teams can choose if they want AWACS. Um, half the missions have it, half of them don't, but Gold League, they all do because I... Gold League, a lot of the teams wanted it, so it was just, that's how we did it. I think next year I may make it so that te the Gold League can choose. We were just seeing how that went in, in Diamond League, and I think it's added a lot of of uh, possibilities for teams to dictate the type of engagements that they want. So I, I like the ability for teams to choose based on the map location, the I distance see. between the maps. And for anybody that doesn't know, we instituted a a mission banning process where there's like 24 missions that teams can ban and 
the teams before each of these matches go in and ban each mission that they want don't want to fly on and the last remaining mission is the one that everybody that you're forced to fly on and they're from all over the map all over the Caucasus area some are short some are long some of them have AWACS and Diamond League some of them don't so the long ones even have tankers so well you don't have to agree because you ban one at a time so team A will ban one team B will ban one then team A then team B and you just go back and forth until there's one map remaining and then that's the map you fly on so you don't have to agree you just Put in the maps that you don't want to fly on. ET coming from zero onto Skinner, and Skinner responds with a 120. Does Skinner see that? I don't think so. I saw the 120 come out first. Yeah, he does. He sees it, or he did. No flares, though. Uh, Which is fine. He's going to get away from it without any issues. Uh, but um, those were better shots, but. Those ETs, that ET was taken from 15 miles, and I just don't foresee people flying these leagues anymore um, falling for that anymore. He's got to be careful, too, though. That F-18 still got three bags on there, so pressing tight. He needs to jettison one of those bags. Yeah, you're going to want to cut some of that drag before you start getting into those tight, mm -hmm. especially if you get lower in altitude there. You're going to not want all that weight on Beaver's getting up off by himself. He's separated by 15 miles. He's a 14, so maybe that's what he's trying to do, just drag somebody in and unleash a, a sneaky phoenix on somebody. Granted, I don't know how sneaky the phoenix can be, but, you know, it is what it is. Something I like, if we flip over and look at Skinner's point of view, as he's egressing, he's getting his altitude back. He's not just flying straight, which I'm guilty of. Sometimes just flying straight. I think most of us are. You want to try and get that altitude back as you egress away from one of these situations. Now vertical Charlie is head to head against Trigger. He's now launching against Trigger. Let's grab this split view here so you guys can see what's going on. That is an R-77, so that is going to be an active missile. Trigger responds with a 120 beat. This isn't even worth it, in my opinion. You don't even need to bother with this because you're launching on somebody that's already defending. You know, if if the guy decides to continue to press you, just drag him into a friendly. There's Don't waste your missile in this situation. I don't see the benefit of this. Do you, Billy? I mean, is there any benefit to that that you know of? Not, a, not, not from what I can see right there, no. It just seemed like that might have been a little bit of a way. Yeah. Uh, TTV Fazl is the Amram C band. Yes. In this weapon restriction. So home team also gets to choose the weapon restriction. Uh, your home team 50% of the time. So you get to either choose the A's weapon restriction or B. A allows the 120C and the Mark 47. And the B bans the 120C and the Mark 47 MK60. B allows the Mark 47, but bans the MK60. Uh, I think I don't think it takes away. I think it's just different. It's a different type. And I think that's part of the beauty here with allowing the teams to choose is we see yeah. a different makeup and composition. So I don't I, I disagree that it takes away. I think it's just a different. It's just different. different. They're more the 120 C at least before the last update was more punishing you know you you didn't have the necessary ability to get in deep maybe make a mistake or launch and then defend a missile you know you just have to fly differently it's a different environment when that that thing is in i think for the pilots that is can in adapt the, the pilot sphere it's it's you know it takes a, a smarter pilot to be able to understand and react to all these different missiles so i think that's part of it too i think <clears throat> removing that takes a little bit less you know it takes a takes more away from what that pilot has to know and react to so it makes things easier in some regards to to not have uh that be an aspect of satal right where we're basically allowing guys to kind of remove part of that from what they need to know mm -hmm. how to defend and, and react to so i don't know i think that it needs to be a, a, an option at the end of the day i don't think it should be the constant but i, I do think the option should be there well and the other thing that people need to consider is that not everybody wants the 120C. Some people want it, some people don't. So by allowing the teams to decide if they want it in their match, it kind of allows teams to make that decision on their own. Right, right, right. Which Mark 47 was launched by Mazzucato. That is coming in on 
someone. I don't know who that's on. I can't really tell. I don't even know if that's still tracking. I think it's dead. Yeah, Fazzle, the AIM-9X is banned in both weapon restrictions. It just, it makes merges more interesting instead of who's able to get the their head around the See, quickest. I don't know. I'm going to disagree with you there. I think the AIM-9X makes things more interesting. I think, especially now that more aircraft do, there are more aircraft within DCS that can utilize it. Not a ton more at this point, but uh, enough. I, I think it makes that whole thing, uh, especially from a pilot perspective, a lot more interesting uh it definitely gives you that that different reach but i can see how uh you know to get a bit more of a of a dynamic merge a more more longer of a merge a better fight at the end of the day removing mm -hmm. that from the equation does does have an effect there still four pilots remaining for both teams nobody's gotten heavily isolated we've seen some pilots go off on their own but they've always come back to the group here nobody's just been on their merry way off on their own the entire time so I, I like that i like that we're not seeing people just off in la la land doing their own thing for the majority of this but teams have been if we thought teams were patient in round one this is even more so billy i mean it's teams are way more reluctant in this round than they were even in round one to engage it seems like yes it, it definitely does uh what we're seeing here is uh, about as drawn out, I think, of a uh, of a of a Saitol match as we've seen in quite some time. Vertical Charlie's now defending against an incoming Phoenix. I think he's going to do a little bit of serpentine action, not trying to notch it, just keep his speed up. See if he can bleed that out of energy. Or is he going to line a sight it? That thing's closing. Oh, he's going to line his. No, he's not. It just misses him. Man, the guidance on the Phoenix sucks. It is bad. It is very bad. Skinner launches a 120 on Zero, who's launched an ET at him. Where's that ET? I don't see it. I don't see it. It hit the ground. So that, that ET isn't a factor at all. And those were just a couple of, I'm going to call them aggravated missiles where people may be getting frustrated that both teams are being so patient and nothing's really happening. Skinner needs to drop his tanks, though, as Diagnosis just said. AIM-54 yeah. now launched by, I think that's launched by Beaver. With the, with the amount of range back to base here yeah, i just didn't the, the three tanks yeah it's a waste of fuel all that. he's gonna land with a couple thousand pounds even if even after a long fight here well th the center line probably doesn't have any gas left in it yeah. and, and you can override those how how that f-18 pulls from which tanks win mm -hmm. so i usually try to override to the center draw the center for my burn up to altitude and you know where i need to go oh, oh what is this 120 being launched Onto vertical Charlie. This is on friendly. Uh oh. I don't. I think he was able to line of sight it. Yeah, he was able to line of sight that, but that no. Ooh, that, oh, that, oh, it is right there. We've noticed the IFF with the FC3 aircraft is uh, challenging sometimes for some of the newer full fidelity planes for whatever reason. It, it seems like it struggles with the IFF even in a friendly situation or friendly fire situation like that. Yeah, that was almost catastrophic. I mean, that didn't get line of sighted. I thought it did, but it just came over the hill. Hello! And popped into his face and just barely didn't have enough to be able to reach out and poke him. Barely. That could have been catastrophic for number 15. They're already around down. Which and now they just used a little bit more fuel and an extra missile than they needed to there yep. on that one. I mean, Vertical Charlie, very good point, had to go into, into gate there to make sure that he wasn't wow. going to get hit by that. Yep. But yeah, man, no, did that get close. Uh, 
that 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 is a definitely not something you don't want to see there in that case. And uh, we we haven't lost an airframe yet, or have nope. we? We lost one. Nope. nope. Yeah, it's four v four. So these guys took off almost thirty minutes ago. Yeah, this is this has got to be one of the longest we've seen go without a kill. It's a while. It was a long match. one. Yeah. Ooh, dude. Oh no, never mind. That but I have a feeling, like in the last one, once things start going. They're going to start going. Beaver with another super long aim seven shot on. How many cold weapons bandits. does Beaver have left? I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm curious. He only has four missiles left. There's something. Is that. There's two aim sevens just floating around out there doing a whole lot of nothing right now. So Beaver's got two 54s and two aim nines remaining. But again, what's the point of these AIM-7s? Like, what are we trying to do? Are you just trying to facilitate the smoke trail and get them to turn around? But even then, I mean, what are you accomplishing? You're just turning them around. At some point, you need them to get closer so that you can get them into a kill position. If you're just getting them to turn around all the time, you're just trying to play a fuel game. At least that's how I see it. Yeah, I'd be curious to get some insight into what the strategy there with that is. Maybe there's something there we're not seeing, but I mean... For me, that's it's just wasting ordnance. Aim 54 now launched by Mazzucato. And that looks to be targeting Cougar down here. And Cougar is sitting low, 400 knots. It is not on Cougar. Is it on Beaver? If it's on Beaver, we can't see him yet. I think that's on Beaver. So Beaver's 10 miles away now from this AIM-54. That's not going to catch him. Beaver's 500 knots. Yeah, this thing's going to slow down as it tries to turn and keep with him. It's just not going to be able to have an effect. But Beaver's getting isolated again. He's down here on his own. Evidently, my son just burned his hand on a hot plate of chicken nuggets. Because he been dropped. There. Yeah. 35. I did that shit not that long ago, yeah, man. We, I know how that goes. It. Sometimes you can't help yourself when it comes to chicken nuggets, dude. No. It's or too good. Or tendies. Can't do anything yeah, about it. They just, they're just. You just want them so it's bad. Want to eat, especially if you got some good dipping sauces to go with it. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's just too overwhelming. You just mm -hmm. got to grab it and go for it. And I mean, you grab the, the pan and pay the price. And yeah. that's. I've been That's there. That's what happened. So these guys, I think we're getting to the point now where things are going to start happening. The The distances between these two teams, sorry about sitting on that dead Phoenix. The distances between these two teams are steadily encroaching on one another. 12 miles and, uh, separation. Like number 15, guys. Very tight, very low right now. Uh, Harpia, however, uh, for the most part, half of the two guys up high, two guys down low. And it looks like they do have the J11s down low, mm -hmm. searching for some of these uh, J, uh, these uh, number 15 guys with uh, the 18 and the 14 up high mm -hmm. uh, trying to contribute to that. And this level. isn't a bad way to ingress here. I mean, no, the 18 is going to be able to see everything with its awesome radar. It's really wide. Uh, gimbal limits and azimuth limits on its radar, so that's not a bad thing to do. You've got a high guy to be able to facilitate that look down ability to see anybody that's down low. Skinner now with one on. Oh, he uh, may have an opportunity here. Trigger coming in against Skinner. Support, and this is where we're talking about being close enough to support, dragging back into your friendlies. Uh, if he can get away from that, he's set up uh, Trigger with a pretty good shot, although Skinner now very cold on that one. I think he's going to end up getting He's going to be able to get away from that. It's not going to be able to close the distance. If we go to split screen, you guys can see that missile trying to trying to close on Skinner, and it's just going to run out of energy here. And now, on the left side, we've actually got Cougar coming in against Zero, and Zero... Nobody support Cougar, though. Cougar is in trouble there. Skinner evading uh, himself, and then uh, the other two are cold. Or not one cold, one hot, but just too far to be able to put a shot on Zero. Well, I thought... Zero, uh, I thought Zero was going to have something on Cougar, but he just didn't have the altitude, and Cougar was able to line of sight that missile and drive it into the ground. 
I would have liked to have seen Zero continue to come back around hot there. He had the opportunity, but tough to know if he realized that he could have pressed there. And, and well, this is well. something that comes from not having anybody high because Trigger had to dive to defeat right. something or he had to egress. So when you don't have anybody high, you have to always keep in the back of your mind, is there somebody else there that I don't see? So if I continue into this position, especially when you're fighting Jay Levins, that can find you an EO and you're not going to get a radar warning on your RWR, um, you always have to wonder, is there somebody that sees me that when I don't see them? But still four pilots remaining for both teams. Both teams have all of their aircraft still. How many weapons does that F-15 or F-14 Bieber, uh, for Bieber have? What does he at for weapons? Mm. Look like he had a decent Four. opportunity to rip two Phoenix some, and two Aim Nines. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen him really try to launch those Phoenixes at that push Harpia just made there. I don't know if he just wasn't in a position to take advantage of that or didn't see it. There was two guys high he could have easily sent to the deck with Phoenixes there, and, and maybe sowed a little bit more confusion for those J11s. Um, I just don't feel like they're getting enough out of that F14 back there at the moment. I'd say. Not, not quite it doesn't sure really happened. seem like it. And we were just viewing Zero and Cougar here, and both of them, as soon as I pulled up the cameras, decided, nah, I'm going to turn around. So still very defensive. And I think, Bill, I'm going to say it again. It comes down to flying low, not having a good picture of what's going on, because when everybody's low, you're not really going to show up on data link from the AWACS. So nobody can really see anybody. And they're right. they're ingressing and they're kind of wondering, especially with the J-11s down there, is there somebody that I don't see that sees me? But these guys seem to be getting more and more restless as things get closer and closer to me. Now we've got Vertical Charlie coming in against Trigger. He's eight miles away. Trigger is now coming in against him. And Vertical Charlie's actually decently high, though I don't know that it's the flanker that you want to you wanna have up this high. Trigger puts a 120 on him. Vertical Charlie, I think, defended early enough. It is 120B, so it's going to have difficulty chasing him down. He's serpentined a bit. And you can see just how fast that missile runs out of energy. He actually does a really good job of line of sighting that. And But look at Zero. Zero now looks to be isolating himself. I mean, look how lonesome Zero is down here, and he could very well get cut off from the rest of his team if he's not careful. I yeah, think it's, it's I think it's gonna be Cougar. Cougar sees him. They're really closing in around. They're not they're hardly not in great position to support one another, but they seem to be closing in around. Oh no. Oh no, here comes a 77 from Vertical Charlie. And I think that got line of sighted. And there's Vertical Charlie behind him. And there's an ER. And he's not going to be able to get away from this one. That's going to catch him. And pop! There's our first casualty of the round. And I said it, I called it early, guys, that it's... It's going to be somebody that gets isolated that is going to be the one that goes down. And Zero got isolated. He was by himself, and he got taken out because of it. He got cut off, had to defend missiles that were coming in, and got dominated by Cougar and Vertical Charlie. Yeah, there's no doubt he just got himself far too uh, deep there, and it was all she wrote. Look at the, how spread out the rest of Harpy is right now. Are we down to two two pilots remaining for Trigger does, I guess he line of sights this? Yeah, three it's just there. flying so right over him. Out. I, I think that was also a part of the reason we saw Zero get caught up there. They just got too spread out. There's just no, mm -hmm. no way to support at the moment, and... Uh, uh, Jay, the number 15 doing a very good job. Yeah, look at this. You weren't kidding about how spread out these guys are. I mean, there is 17 miles between yeah. each of the pilots for Harpia, whereas number 15, everybody is right on top of one another. Beaver is going to be hot in here. 120 coming from Skinner onto Wolf. Skinner's actually in a really good position. 
coming in here on Wolf if he's able to, to keep the press on. Is Wolf going to be able to get away from that? Looks like it. And now we've got an aim 54 coming from Mazzucato. And that looks like it's on Beaver. He's going to die here. Smack! Telephone pulled to the face. And Beaver gets taken down just way too aggressive in that F-14 and gets caught hanging out without any defense by Mazzucato with the Phoenix. But at the same time, we've got Wolf getting run down by Skinner. So Wolf is on the left. Skinner is on the right. Skinner looks to be like he's breaking away. I think. I can't really tell. And Wolf is launching a couple missiles. It's an R-77. And another R-77. So an R-77 going on to Vertical Charlie. And another one going on to Cougar. Does Cougar see that? Tough to tell here. I think he does. And then I think Wolf actually shot down his own missile. Uh, there's a lot of... There's a lot of seven. missiles in the air. A lot yeah, of missiles in the air. But Wolf, I think, is in... He's in a lot of trouble. So we got the forward view from Wolf and the rear view from Wolf. Yeah, Cougar just snuck up behind him. And at this point, there's so much stuff happening at the same time. So many people are dying at the same time. There. Skinner. I think we've only got Mazzucato left. We lost one number 15? I can't tell. Now ER yeah. coming on Mazzucato. I don't know that he gets away from this one. Is he... No. So Mazzucato ends up getting hit, which is unfortunate. And Skinner is still up. So, complete polar opposite from round one, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Total opposite right there. Just domination from the number 15 side. Carbon says, did Trigger black out? Maybe. I don't know. Let's jump to the tack view because, and we're going to skip a lot of it because not a lot happened there for a big part of that matchup. That was a strange one. That was, that was, that was a strange one. The whole, the whole thing. Was it was, I don't know if it was strange. It just took a long time. Different for sure. Yeah, okay. I can I can make the point your uh, uh, diagnosis uh, fuel I think may have also started creeping. Good the back point. Of Very good point. Yeah. Expendables too. And if we look at vertical Charlie in the top right corner, uh, or actually in the main screen, he actually just jettisoned all of his missiles. So fuel is definitely a concern it seems for these pilots as they RTB. Let's see if I can get here. So nothing happens here for a long time. And this is our first casualty right here. And this is what we were talking about. Zero just finds himself all by himself. Communication between Trigger and Zero seems to be non-existent. Trigger gets isolated. It's not a 2v1. It's a 3v1 because Skinner's right there. And in this, in this scenario, I like this pincer maneuver where they're so separated that if you defend one, you leave yourself open to the other. Right. And uh, he did, he just should not have been that deep down in there. That was you want to you know I see Lazi's comment there too, and it's you want you want to make a calculated kind of push there, and I don't know how calculated this one was. Maybe calculated at the beginning, and then maybe you forgot yeah. about what your overall goal was. I, I, once again, this that... is where the separation really starts to get big for Harpia, and that's what I don't understand is why all of a sudden they end up so spaced out here and. Uh, and this is where I think there's somebody's way up to the north, even further out of picture here. 
Um, I just don't understand how I almost maybe maybe worth backtracking a second and seeing how they got so split up or what caused that. Was, was that something number 15 did that ended up having them so split up? Mm, I think it was just, it was, it was this. So vertical Charlie sorting on trigger and trigger turning around and zero continuing. They didn't turn around together. Well, I guess I mean previous to that, the, 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 it, they're already fairly split up, at least sectioned off into two flights kind of far from each other at this point. And, and it felt like in the early stages of the math, they were a bit closer together, even in the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they seemed to stay a little bit tighter. Why they ended up splitting up like that to, mm -hmm. to two sides. Of, I think it's a communication issue. Yeah, very well may have been the case. And 51st Frosty says, oof, roll. And what he's talking about is this. And this is what I've been talking about with exploiting. The rule didn't exist in Say Talent this time about this rule. It only existed for the Tomcat because we thought it was only the Tomcat, but it's actually everybody. All the aircraft can do it. So you can see this this roll maneuver that happens here. And I'm sorry, Trigger, I'm using you as an example. But uh, it's like this. And it doesn't look like much, but when you do this, it... I don't know why it happens, but it totally screws up everything in the sim, and you a lot of times desync. This one really wasn't fast enough to cause it. If you do this faster, yeah, it causes I mean, I, it can cause problems. And there's um, rolling to create a larger signature with your chaff and with your flares. Sure, like rolling flares, all that stuff are, are definitely doable, viable tactics. At the end of the day, I think there's just uh, there comes a point where it it it's an excessive thing that's kind of breaking the system at the end of the day. And yeah. it's a fine line. There's no doubt. There's no doubt, but you can see it when someone's specifically exploiting it. It's mm -hmm. very obvious in the tack view that that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. I've seen and this didn't affect this missile. This missile actually lost track of him earlier and it wasn't tracking him at all. You would have, if it was tracking him is maybe if we would have seen something, but I, I don't know. Um, Cause it didn't track him. So not entirely sure. Uh, but aim 54 beaver just gets caught out in the middle of no man's land. Why did he launch an aim nine? I'm not sure. There was some very peculiar missile shot choices in this, in this match. We saw a lot of those aim sevens just seemingly getting thrown out at much longer distances than they should be shot. Maybe at, he so. recognized that he was shit out of luck and he Maybe. was hoping that Mazzucato was going to continue on. But guys, this is a Tomcat. It don't give two craps if it gets hit in the face. It's just going to fly through it a lot of times. It'll take some system damage. But yesterday, there was a time where it took me three AMRAMs to bring down a Tomcat while it was smoking. And it could have been desync. I don't know. But who knows? Not true. Not true what? You guys got to be more... Oh, zero style? <laughs> I want to know what, man, Wolf is just launching at everyone. How many missiles does he launch? One, two, three, four. Is that all he had left? Five, six. Vazi, I can show you the track. I hit a Tomcat three times yesterday. I think a big part of it has to do with, well, it, it typically is a problem when I hit him right in the cockpit, right? We've when you seen it on here where they've eaten missile after missile after missile. And, and sometimes too. The last one we saw was due to that spin maneuver awesome. where it was the exploit. But this guy wasn't, he was just flying. And I think a lot of the times when the Tomcat gets hit right in the face, it may lose systems, but it doesn't do enough damage. And I can send you the tack view. Um, where I hit him, and I watched him hit him. Like, he got hit by three missiles. I watched them hit him, and he s was smoking, and it, d it took three to kill him. And the third one, I think it was two to the face, and then the third one hit him in the butt, and then that's when he disintegrated and, and broke and, apart. And in all fairness to the 14 too, I think there's a lot of, uh, you know, ED been working on a damage model, and probably there's some heat blur side of things. Well, w let's wait until that all gets flushed out and, and those changes are made before we really fine tune mm -hmm. the damage model on the F-14. So I think a lot of the problems we see regarding damage and planes tanking missiles and all that stuff is, is really just because we haven't gotten that enhanced damage model within DCS. And, and 
hopefully that's something we see Eagle Dynamics uh, finally get mm-hmm. to because it's clearly one of the more important parts. I think for those single player guys out there that are doing their simulations and running that stuff, it's not a factor. So there hasn't been a lot of uh, pressure on ED to get these type of things fixed. But uh, we see here time and time again how those problems are caused by the lack of a, of a, of a very functional damage model within mm-hmm. DCS. So I think I think a lot of this falls back on ED to, to kind of get that shaped up and, and sort it out better. Janela says he didn't have fuel. That's why he was launching so many missiles. That makes sense. That makes sense. It and it, it also makes it. sense for his, for his flight path here that he's not really progressing on anybody. He's just trying to launch everything that he can on everyone in hopes to get something if you don't have fuel or you have very little left it, right. it makes sense that that's that's going on but at the same time too you want to you want to you want to get some speed going before you launch those missiles lots and lot you can lots of launch them all you want at a slow speed and they're only going to do so much at the end of the day besides just take up airspace skinner actually gets hit by a missile here i didn't see that on the track yeah it looked like so that came from trigger yeah and he eats it and still continues on there mm-hmm. which it happens it's sometimes. True. Everybody, I can guarantee, everybody that's flown in DCS multiplayer has seen that happen, where you yourself have gotten hit and you don't die. I have no idea why it happens. I'm going to attribute it to desync, um, where the shooter's missile actually lost track and it hits you and you don't die. But you know, I don't know. It's the mysteries of DCS, I guess. Yeah, and especially it seems like it, it, it it's the consistency of it's crazy. I got hit from a Shilko the other day, and I, I swear every bit of surface on my Hornet was damaged, but I landed the plane, didn't mm-hmm. lose any fuel or anything. It was a little bizarre, but that, that may have been some decent. So tough mm-hmm. to know with that stuff. Like I said, ED really needs to mm-hmm. get us this new damage model, hopefully within you know this century. Mm-hmm. Uh, people asking for lessons, dude, don't pay for lessons. Just get on and fly. The best way to get better is just experience. If you... Get a group. Find a group of people yeah. to fly. That, I, I That's a good way to do it. Enough. DCS, multiplayer, air combat is not a lone wolf, single person thing at the end of the mm-hmm. day. Not saying that this is the approach anyone's taking out there, but I see time and time again, guys think they can go into these environments by themselves and be effective. And there are people who have done that, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of experience behind those guys going in there and doing that and a lot of those guys who are capable of going in there by themselves and holding their own have flown with a group for a long time Mm -hmm. but if you're new the best thing you can do is find a group of people who are a little bit better than you that are going to teach you and show you types of things in here there's plenty out there that that facilitate that and don't require any type of crazy stuff getting a group of people that you know and trust to fly with is the best way to get yourself better at dcs bottom mm-hmm. line i don't care what anyone tells me you're not changing my mind on that that is truly the most effective way mm-hmm. to get good at this tactical dcs with. is a good one by tactical it people really there's a lot of people he's a solid one that, that are actually progressing and and found you know good foundations for 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 this type of stuff that are being built there so yeah mm-hmm. that's a great one to recommend uh and then wingman finder too i always yeah. i always like to recommend them they, they yeah. do a pretty good job they're great uh, but don't pay for anything and not even yeah. squadrons are great but you don't even have to be in a squadron man it just find yeah, people that you enjoy flying with and yep. you guys you'll be surprised at how fast you get better the other thing i can't recommend enough is splurge spend some money on tack view and review your flights yeah it's, it's worth it. It's truly worth it at the end of the day. And doing that with a group, going and flying with a group. And, and I think, as you said, it doesn't need to be a squadron. I know the Athena guys, we didn't start out as like a squadron. We were in a Milsim group and we, we just really enjoyed flying PVP together. And the one thing kind of leads to another over time and it just kind of happened. But we didn't start out with the intention of uh, of being a squadron or doing anything like that. Mm-hmm. It just kind of happens over time. And, and I think when you find a group of people that you like flying with, it all compounds and Mm-hmm. You're, you're able to help each other in ways you don't realize so that's a big, big ironic part. says people have money not time not sure why it's different than any other thing you would pay to get assistance on the reason is because most of the people that are pay that are offering to train people for money have no idea what they're talking about and i don't even necessarily know if it's that because there's certainly stuff that can be gathered there but I, I just i think there are so many outlets in the dcs world to get that same level of of information and, and and instruction that you're it is a waste of money to go pay for it within this environment there's so many places so many different youtube channels i mean you look at a lot of other different communities there's not nearly as much stuff out there helping you to try to get 
to mm-hmm. a higher levelness. Now, granted, it's a, it's it's one of those things where it's very nuanced. There's a whole lot going on, and and learning about air combat before you even learn the sim mm-hmm. is is a, is a definitely a big helper there. Understanding the world of air combat, missiles, uh, notching, uh, the radars, the way radars work, all mm-hmm. that stuff is such an important foundation to learn DCS and get better at DCS that if you don't have that type of stuff, you're fighting an uphill battle trying to learn it all at once through mm-hmm. the sim. You know, doing your homework and understanding that type of stuff, definitely uh, a big part of getting yeah. better at this. That's true. That's true. But, you know, I'm going to go back on, on what I said. And I, I really think a lot of the people that are offering paid lessons should not be teaching DCS. Well, there's, I think there's a reason you're doing that. If there's a reason you're doing that in the first place, it's because, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to create income based upon some knowledge you have where, you know, there's there's a reason why somebody's doing that in that regard there. And I think you got to be wary of what I think the people that are doing that in DCS and in a game have an overconfidence in their own ability and are not the people you don't want to learn from somebody like that. You want to learn from people that are always in a classroom themselves and are always trying to learn themselves because you want to find somebody that admits that they don't know anything, everything and are always on a path to try and get better themselves. If you're, if you're trying to find somebody that says I'm a master dude in almost everything in the world, any hobby or anything, people that say that dude, they usually suck and they're, they're, they half ass things. They take shortcuts and they, they just talk out their ass. And a lot of times they'll just say things to say things because they don't want to say, I don't know. And uh, what Gordo's saying there, uh, so valuable. Chuck's guides, if you're not starting, if you don't buy a module and start with the Chuck's guide, you're doing it wrong. The, the Chuck's guide is truly the place to go and understand a majority of what is going on within that mm-hmm. module. Uh, shout out to Chuck Owl. I, I say this all the time. I said it to him when he came on Blue Fat the other day. Easily one of the most important members of this community with the information, the effort he puts in to making all that documentation. Uh, I, I think a majority, of, a majority of us out there that are into these full fidelity modules have spent a ton of time in those Chuck's guides because of the amount of information that's there, mm-hmm. because of accurate the information is he does a lot of hard work and a lot of researching and a lot of finding out what the actual deal with these things are to explain it to us so shout out to chuck i I truly truly appreciate the effort he puts in and like Mm -hmm. i said i'll say it again easily one of the most valuable members of the dcs community ed should be paying that guy but i get i get the dynamics of that 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 whole thing there so Mm -hmm. uh no doubt if you're not familiar with chuck's guides you're not not reading them and you're new to dcs I highly recommend making that the first place you go to try to get better. Yeah, they're a good place to start. They're a good place to start. But the best thing to do, guys, who are, I don't remember who's who asked that question, is just go up and fail. You're going to learn so much more by failing and reviewing what you're doing than you're going to really doing anything else. And, and, and I think, you know, from a... You, you want to focus on not dying first. You know, you, there, I feel like with a lot of people I observe, especially with the PvP side of things, there's this phase where you die a lot. Then there's these phases where you don't really get a ton of kills, but you make it back a lot because you're getting better at evading. Mm-hmm. And the, with the with the understanding and knowledge of evasion comes the opportunities to get off better shots. You begin to understand what a better shot is and isn't by kind of reviewing those tactics and getting better at getting away from them. At least that's how it worked mm-hmm. for me. I felt like I got better at evading, better at getting away from stuff, and then I got good at actually getting in there, getting the kills and seeing the, mm-hmm. the looks I want and that type of stuff. But you know, at the end of the day, there, there's a lot to that. So, Just fast forwarding this stuff, guys. I'm going to send you back to the Fight for Honor trailer video while I get round three set up. This is winner takes all between number 15 and Harpia. We are tied at one apiece.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Fight for Honor trailer. If you have any interest in signing up for Fight for Honor, check out exclamation point FFH in the chat, and the bot will give you the information that you need to sign up. Uh, I'm just going to get stuff figured out here. Uh, I fast forward a little bit so we don't have to wait this huge amount of time for ingress. Um, I think that's beneficial because these matches are very, very long, and none of us or Billy and I don't have as much time, maybe as some of you guys, just to do all of this. This match is going on three hours, so That's we're trying long. to get get going here. Uh, but I don't know how long it's going to be after this point. I just took off a lot of the ingress for for this round. So these guys are already towards the AO. They've already come together. Uh, well, I haven't come together and shot anything yet. You guys haven't missed anything, but they're already 20 miles apart. So we've just taken out the ingress into the into the area. Um, 20 miles apart, separating number 15 and Harpia. Number 15 is still doing the two-ship lead and the two-ship trail. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I think I feel like in 4v4, you want to be more aggressive. And the team that's more aggressive... And is able to push the other team onto the back foot because you don't have as many pilots that can come around and maybe that the opposition can lose track of. Uh, typically, the more aggressive team is the one that is able to win. I would agree with that. I, I think in specifically in <clears throat> gold, yeah, with the 4v4, the aggression does tend to pay. I think, but we, in, and it's been pointed out, we, we walk a fine line when we talk about this stuff where we, we want aggression, but we want calculated, you know, we want smart mm -hmm. choices in, in the shots. And, and, and calculated aggression is a term I try to use a lot because that's what it is at the end of the day. You have to be aggressive, but yeah, it's a fine line you have to walk between being too aggressive and and, uh, and and not stupid and putting yourself in a bad position, right? Mm -hmm. You want to press when the opportunity is there. It's it's about developing that sixth sense to know when the opportunity is, is mm -hmm. approaching and is, is kind of in front of you, right? I think I think a lot of people who have done this for a bit will tell you that you know you, you get a sixth sense when the opportunity is kind of approaching for a kill, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it, it's about the building that experience. And this is what we were talking before about you know paying for lessons and all this stuff. And I I think. There's there's no simple way to get from point A to point B within mm -hmm. DCS. You have to put the time in. There, 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 there. It is not one of those things where a little bit of time will pay dividend, <clears throat> no matter how you spend it. It's it's about putting time in and, and learning and experience. And there's no fast way to get from point A to point B on that, no matter what you do or how you try. Uh, it's about the reps. It's about the experience and, and, and seeing that on, a, on mm -hmm. a consistent basis, I think. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get good at it, if you want to get you know well-rounded in it, it's time and effort. There's yeah, that's no a good point. And if you're paying that. for lessons, you're not going to get that experience. Well, and, and, well the gentleman who, who brought it up, he mentioned his time is limited and all that stuff. And and I understand that. There's certainly a lot of people who don't put the time and effort that, you know, say me and you put into this. But at the end of the day, that how good you get is is uh, directly related to the amount of time and effort you put into it regardless of who is curating that time and effort uh mm -hmm. it, it, it's 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 not one of those things where you can get good fast at it's just not yeah those are all all very valid points let me make sure i'm not yeah we're not it's unfortunate and i think it's part of the reason why our community is as small and as niche as it is mm -hmm. is because we are dealing with very complex convoluted uh deep subject matter very almost scientific in nature in some some aspects uh most aspects in, in a lot of different ways but, you know depending on what you're talking about mm -hmm. from missile dynamics to bfm and, and the aerodynamics of the aircraft there's just a lot of things going on and if you start from zero it's you don't realize how much information you really need to intake to be able to be to go into an environment like this and be effective at the end Vertical Charlie launches an R-77 at an incoming trigger. I don't think trigger is going to have any problem getting away from this. Where's that R-77? There it is. He looks to be perfectly fine getting away from that. Yeah, that, that's not going to catch him. It's already run out of juice and falling behind and it actually doesn't keep track of him with its limited seeker head that the r77 has and flies harmlessly into the ground did you guys notice over the last patch if you shot an er you can splash target what does that mean can you elaborate on that rim 
I don't know quite what that what that means. And I have a pop filter. I probably need to bust that sucker back out. Sometimes I get a little uh, animated, to say the least. There. Yeah, I'm lucky. Sorry. The <laughs> the mic I have has one built in, so I don't have to worry yeah. about that. We need to strap that sucker. Aim back fifty four coming in on Beaver. Is that going to have the juice required? There's Beaver, and it's just doing the the Phoenix thing. It doesn't know where it wants to go. Doesn't know what it wants to be when it grows up. Mahula says it may have helped to have something like a coach. Yeah, but that's why you Absolutely. just surround yourself with people that are good. Yeah, you want people who are all trying to get better, right? I think that's one of the things that Athena we talk about. Everyone there wants each other to get better consistently, and there is no there is no point to where you're good enough. You're always mm -hmm. trying to get better. You're always looking at ways, you know, how did I just die? Why did I just die? How can I prevent that from happening again? Mm -hmm. You know, the, that's the kind of the ethos, I think, of the guys who want to get good at this mm -hmm. stuff is, is how do you fix what just happened and not let it happen again? Mm -hmm. It's not an easy thing in, in, mm -hmm. in a lot of situations, but that's kind of the path you have to take. Nothing really. Both teams still very stubborn coming in here. Separation well, between vertical Charlie and Trigger is now 14 nautical miles. And I think this comes down to nobody really wanting to, yeah. to lose it. Right, exactly. We're sitting, We're back on our heels here. Everyone's kind of afraid to lose the match as opposed to wanting to win the match at this point and i think you have to you have to figure out a way to get your guys to flip that switch in the moment here and and, and go after that win uh and, and once again we'll go back to the, the controlled aggression is uh the key to flipping that switch i think and, and getting that that moving uh once again we're seeing a lot of separation from harpy again i'm seeing that northern and yeah. southern flight which uh, i think kind of did them in in that in that last round so I'm, I'm not sure if we see wolf begin to circle back north here I, I, i'd like to see him try to slot in in between trigger and zero right now but he just keeps extending to the south there i'm not, I'm not sure what spooked him there but trigger doesn't look like he sees anybody he's got a mark 47 i think coming on him hey he's egressing Let me grab that mark 47 there it is. So here's the Mark 47, and Mazzucato actually launches one himself. And that one's on Vertical Charlie. I shot at ER last night on GS, and they hit a far away bandit. He was on 100 points. <laughs> it's pretty far away, man. Yeah. It's pretty far. That's, that's a decent way. <laughs> Beaver actually, like been there, though. <laughs> Beaver actually launches two AIM 54s, one on Trigger and one on Mazzucato. And you can see how fast those things run out of juice. And they just dance. Yeah. Oop, there it goes. It's doing its energy burn. Yep. Maybe it wants to be at a lower energy state. I don't know. Maybe it's happier maybe there. It's, maybe it's a space shuttle and it's trying to land somewhere nice and easy and gently. That's what it seems like sometimes. <laughs> Separation between the two teams led the way by Beaver is down to 15 miles. Beaver better be careful because he's in a Tomcat, which isn't known for its ability in prosecuting close in situations unless you make it to the merge. Trigger's thinking about recommitting here. And Beaver is 10 miles away. I'd like to see Trigger. There's a Mark 47 launched onto Trigger. Trigger puts a 120 on him. And then immediately defends. Why did you double tap, Beaver? I don't know that that was intentional. Beaver's going to be okay getting away from that. One of those Mark 47s gets trashed. But the other one is also trashed. And I think that's a showcase right there of how easy the AIM-54 is to to get rid of. Yeah. And how non, how little of a factor it is for a lot of this. When they're just launched willy-nilly um, onto low contacts that are actively defending them. Oh, excuse me. ET now launched from Wolf onto Cougar.
and that's going to run out of juice. That is at 800 knots already. It's not going to be able to touch Vertical Charlie at all. Skinner's got a Mark 47 on him that he drives into the ground. Mazzucato has a 120 that he's outrunning. If we take a look at Mazzucato's positioning, there's the 120 behind him. That's not going to cause him any problem. But the teams are getting closer and closer together as this match continues to, to play out here. Trigger and Wolf are now prosecuting prosecuting Beaver. Beaver's got an ET coming at him from his right side. There goes an aim seven from Beaver. And Beaver's in trouble. He's got a 120 coming from the top right. I don't think he's going to be able to defend that. No, he is the first casualty of round three. And that puts number 15 on the back foot here. That is not a good place to be in. 4v3 now. Harpia with the man advantage. Beaver just got a little too promiscuous with that 14. Tried to probe a little bit too deeply. And got taken down by a flanking maneuver. Vertical Charlie now launching an R-77 onto Wolf. Don't know if that's still still tracking. R Aim-7 coming from Trigger now. <laughs> ET from Zero onto Cougar. We can watch that, see if we can get that missile there. I think this is it. I think this is it. Yeah, it's on, it's on Cougar who's turned away. We got the we got majority of Harpia grouped up there and then uh, look like yeah, Zero's, Zero's actually not in a bad position as long as he doesn't overextend. Right, right. He's got to be careful and, and continue to try to drag back mm -hmm. to that cluster of uh, number 15 guys mm -hmm. there to the northeast. Mm -hmm. Now, 120 being launched by Trigger onto, I think that's onto Cougar. Cougar's just sucking up all the missiles and doing a decent job of relaxing and not overextending another one from trigger looks like it's on skinner and this actually isn't a bad scenario so they've pushed two off they're defending and now vertical charlie is isolated and unsupported so his nearest support is four miles in trail and increasing and i'm worried that he's going to overextend in this situation he's, he's now head on with zero from the south I think he's realized his plight and has turned away. R-77 comes from zero from the south region of the, the AO. And Vertical Charlie, I think, realizes I, I'm getting a little too close. I need to, to get out of here. Aim-54 launched from Mazzucato. That looks like it's on Vertical Charlie. Is he in trouble? Yes, he is. So he gets taken down. We caught that at the very last second. Vertical Charlie just didn't defend that. I don't know what happened there, but he just flew straight until the very last minute and just got rammed by that telephone pole size missile. And Harpia still has four pilots remaining, ladies and gentlemen. Cougar and Skinner are now ingressing against Wolf. Wolf puts multiple... Oh, no! Oh, no! Wolf, what have you done? We missed that for a second, but Wolf ended up taking down Mazzucato. His friendly and then gets taken down by all kinds of incoming threats from number 15. What happened? So now we're down to a 2v2, and we're going to see a trade... I think here between, yeah, we see a trade between Skinner, and I don't know who that was. Maybe you guys can see that on TAC view. But Skinner and his opposition trade, and we're left with just zero. Zero is the only man remaining. So if things could have gone positively for number 15, I don't think they could have gone any better than what just happened as... Wolf team kills Mazzucato and then immediately dies. So now it's a 3v2 instead of a 4v2. And that just got really, really close. Crazy. I, I'm sorry we missed that, but there was, there was so much stuff that happened there at the same time. That was just unfortunate. But Zero is the only man remaining.
Oh, I guess that was, he just got in the thick of it and started shooting. You get a missile. You get a missile. Here's one for you. One for you. And didn't matter if it was a friend, foe, neutral. Didn't matter. He was the one that splashed the suit 30. <laughs> oh. Well, that was an interesting ending there. That, that, that went the distance. <laughs> Oh, uh, definitely not as a uh, protruded or prolonged as the uh, the other ones there. Um, no, but, no. Uh, once it happened, it, it certainly happened pretty fast. Yeah, that that one took a took a bit longer. But let's jump to tack view and see what what ended up going down. See if we can catch what happened in that last round or the last last incursion. Okay, go go go. So nothing happens here for a while. Blah, 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 blah. Teams stay pretty... Something I'm noticing here, Billy, is that these teams are much closer together than they were in past rounds. So anyways, I started blasting. Anyways, I started blasting. <laughs> That's a good way to, good it way is. to put that. That is a good way to put it. Good one, Gordo. I like that. It's uh, probably a meme we should use more often around here. But these guys seem like they're just much more aggressive in this round three like they're they're not nearly as separated i mean for a good part of this they're 10 miles apart beaver just gets it's like he sees a tree in the forest gotta have it and he just goes for it and the missiles go for him unfortunately missiles are a little bit faster than his plane and he gets taken down what's up yeah, with that. the aim seven there's so many of them just doing nothing today. I mean, it, it, that if that if that isn't the underlying theme of this match. I don't know what is. But what is the this? More sevens do nothing. Then I have anything else to do something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And it's not even like I don't even think it's like, normally. I'm complaining about the missile being trash. I don't even think that's the case. We didn't even see it get used in a capacity that it could. Not be really. No. <laughs> it's just strange, man. You're better off putting the talls. Shift the shift the, the Mavericks or the Phoenixes to the outside pylons. Put two talls on, man. That's you're true. You get way more out of it than you are yeah. just lobbing stupid aim sevens out of nowhere, man. Yeah, but just for smoke trails, why do you need a smoke trail here? The guy you're shooting at is cold. Like, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> and you've been launched on. Like, you're getting a missile warning. Maybe he means to launch a 54. I don't know. But that's... That's not going to do anything. And then Vertical Charlie, like, forgets to defend or something here against the same 54 that's coming right there. He decided to, to finally push his way in, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if he had the support he necessarily needed. He, he, he was close. They were close, but just not close enough to really help him out on that point. He has no Phoenix? Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Just, man. Just better shot choices. I mean, it, it's generally the consistent theme, especially when you're talking the Gold League matches, and I think that comes from some of the experience and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. just better shot selection in, in some of these cases. I know that's that's easy to sit here and say sometimes, but, you know, there's, I think, you know, as we talk about a lot, there's parameters, right? There's numbers you need to have. Your numbers got to be right, you know, in a lot of these different cases. And uh, if the math's not adding up, you know, you shouldn't shouldn't be shooting in, in, in a lot of these situations. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see teams maybe take a little bit more of a look at when and where you know their timelines in a lot of these different situations right as far as uh, that type of stuff goes because i think you know, there's a reason you know the, mil the, the, the militaries around the world use timelines on these type of things uh -huh. so the pilots know when and where to shoot and uh I, I think you know we could we could see more of a focus on that within say talk what happens here i think your camera check camera we're, we're looking at open space Like, why does Wolf Inc. Does, maybe he mistakes Mazzucato for Cougar? Uh, very, very possibly could be the case. Is that, what is he? He ditches a tank. He ditches the bags there. Okay, yeah. I have no idea what happens here. It has to be that he thinks it's Cougar. He sees somebody on his data link and just, I don't know. He kill he takes out Mazzucato and then immediately dies to an R seventy seven. Or no, he doesn't. 
he gets hit by an R-77. Oh, he breaks up. So he gets hit. He's totally damaged. Launches an R-77. Then he he like enters free fall and then gets hit by another missile. He's toast. So that R-77 does kill him. Um, and then Cougar eats this missile from Trigger. How far is that? Five miles. Ooh, yeah, you're, you're I think this is somewhere. this is because Skinner. Or, no, it's actually on Cougar. This is a good launch. It's actually on Cougar. That's a four mile launch. I think Cougar just makes the mistake of uh, inst he try he tries to run from this instead of sticking in the notch. Gordo B, you can still IFF and EO. You just flip your radar on and off. They won't get a RWR indication from you. It doesn't. You just got to remember to do it. People just forget. You guys can say he was an EO all you want. You still IFF. You know, I flew the flanker for a long time. You still flip your radar on and off, flip it on and off while you're an EO. They don't get an indication you're there, and you IFF them. You don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, I know that feeling when one when, of when those IRs get you. And you're just like, what the hell just happened? And yeah. yeah. I know that feeling all too well. Yeah. Yeah, Mazzucato, I can imagine. Like, you got nothing on you, and you just get obliterated by something you didn't even see. Those are the butt pucker moments where I'm just worried something actually came out. We've been trying to keep this more PG, and Lawsy just keeps sliding in, making that real difficult. <laughs> I'm trying. I think I'm doing a decent job. <laughs> we have. We have. Uh, Skinner launches a AIM-9 right before he dies. Sorry, it's 120. Right before he dies to an AIM-9. Uh, I guess he just didn't see that. Those AIM-9s can be really hard to see, but this was the trade we missed. Trigger and Skinner hitting each other. We saw Skinner get taken out, but we didn't see Trigger get taken out. So these guys end up trading, and then it's just zero by himself. And they they... I guess decided that it wasn't worth having him RTB, um, and they closed the server. So Harpy ends up taking this one. So number fifteen won the first matchup, and then this one Harpy won. So they're one and one coming against one another. What a round! These, these I need a break. These last few matches have been three hours long. Yeah, it is definitely a lot to unpack. Oh, that's been a long. A long time. It takes it wears on me. I can't believe we used to do two matches a day last year on it Saturdays. A, it was a long Saturday. Long it Saturday. was. I, it's I I miss it, but I don't miss it at the same note. I yeah, I do too. Time, you know, Saturday. it was nice not having to do anything during the week, but having the shorter streams and only doing one match, it's a little bit easier on my brain. It's just easier to handle. I don't feel like I'm gonna die for the rest of the day. Well, I can actually I, like, go do do something. Like the guys always try to get me to go fly mm -hmm. after we would do that, and like I just noticed, like would notice my my flight, my session would just be mush because my brain is just totally mm -hmm. you know fried after going and doing that all day. Mm -hmm. As for now, with one of them, I can kind of get in and get a pretty good session in and still be be with it, and be pretty focused and all that kind of stuff. We go fly, but yeah, a full day of doing this stuff really wears wears you it out. It wears you out. Think a whole lot. You're more more so even than than when you're flying in some cases. Not mm -hmm. not, not always, but mm -hmm. in certain situations. Yeah. No. So, so but this one was almost like we have a here. <laughs> no. So this one was almost three hours long. We are not streaming Saturday because I've got to get Fight for Honor going. Uh, and there's we've got 160 people registered already. I think there's probably going to be more registering the next couple days. So I gotta I gotta get that taken care of. So we will be back next week with Diamond League. We are going back to six v six. Uh, so that is going to be who's flying. That is going to be Tav versus Phoenix Task Force on Tuesday. And then Golden Crown taking on 64th Aggressors. So Ooh. those are going to be next week, Tuesday and Thursday. No stream Saturday. Okay. No stream Saturday. Reminder. Wow. Is, is so... And will there be anywhere that the Folds of Honor can be watched, or will that not be this weekend? That, not this not weekend. This weekend. Next, Next week weekend, fall. yes. So October third and and fourth, it will be streamed. But this weekend, there's so many matches. I just have I want to make sure that it runs smoothly, and right. that everybody has a good experience instead of me being worried about keeping the stream going. No, and getting I agree. Everything going I, think, there. 
I think you know what you got to earn the right to get on the stream and get up get up there within the whole thing too. So mm -hmm. I think there there's a, a, an aspect of that as well. I'm really excited to see how this whole uh, tournament turns out. Uh, I think it's one of the better ones uh, to watch all year. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think you know with just the amount of people in it, they, there's a lot of talent here. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of guys who think they uh, they could they could they can go up against that DARPA AI and maybe mm -hmm. do something. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see that too as well. So. Uh, yeah, this is this is gonna be good. Looking forward to it. And, yep. uh, I'm 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 most excited for a Saturday off at the same note. So. Yeah, it's uh, well, you get a Saturday off. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice to not cast. I'll say that. It'll be nice to not cast. So we'll, I will, we'll, we'll I will go from there. I dedicate some kills for you as I march through the skies of the DC. As much as I love all of you guys, it'll it'll be nice to not have to talk for three hours. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you on that. So that's all I got, ladies and gentlemen. There may be a supercut. Alpha Whiskey may get one out for this match coming here soon. Um, I know he real life sometimes gets in the way. Uh, so hopefully there will be one, um, I think. Or maybe he's skipping this one. I don't remember. But anyway, no match, no stream this Saturday. We'll be back on Tuesday of next week with Golden Crown taking on Ta, followed by, was it Golden Crown? No, that's wrong. Ta versus Phoenix Task Force, and then Golden Crown taking on 64th Aggressors. So that's where we leave you guys. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Billy, any closing? Mustache, want to say anything? You good? I'm, I'm pretty good. Things are pretty pretty normal for me at the moment. All right. Same old, same old. All right, guys. So that's it. Until next time, stay safe in those virtual skies. And Billy and I, we'll see you guys later. See you.